And we are live, I think. <laughs> I think we're live, finally. Yeah. Oh my gosh. That was a nightmare. Let me just check, because, you know, we're, we're like one man down at the moment, so I don't know if, <laughs> I don't know if this is going to work. Uh, how do I go on to this? <clears throat> YouTube, let's check. Sorry, guys, I'm, I'm just having to check to see if we're actually live and, you know, if um, people can actually see. Me. Oh, wait, they can. Uh, they? Let me know. Let me know if you guys can hear me. How's the how's the audio? Um, again, you know, we're one man down because Alex wants to be a freaking hero. He wants to be somewhere else. So, guys, do let me know if you can hear the audio. Amazing. Amazing. See? Are they can see us and watch us? One and, man. And listen, hit? Ray, do you mind just shutting that door, please? Brilliant. Why are you celebrating that for? You just shut the door. <laughs> oh. Mm -hmm. Guys, listen, normally we have Alex who, um, you know, isn't lazy and he comes over. He uh, does all the technical stuff. I just have to light my cigar and I'm still late. But today I had to do everything. I had to do everything and I'm having to like manage the stream as well. So if you see me reach over, over this way, the reason I'm doing that is because I'm, I'm messing about with the, uh, with the console to switch back and forth between um, Ray and me. And, oh, for God's sake, I've got to change this setting as well now. One, two, three, four. There we go. Okay, so now, if I cut... Hey, you guys can see Ray now. <laughs> Are so, you me? Can you see me? Hello? They can hear you, man. Yeah, they can see Are you as well. They can see me. Yeah. Nice and colorful as usual. Oh. So, because of the fact that I control the console today, we can have like a a one to one session, you know. This time, you know, Alex and he can it. switch me whenever I want, whenever he want. But guys, my mic is working. <laughs> I can just switch off. Start with... complaining can I if off the mic? mic doesn't work. Can I switch... Oh, I can't no, you switch can't off. switch no, off. No, because it's linked to no. mine. Yeah. It's linked to mine. So you, even if you can see me, you can hear me. Yeah. Right. Um, Before Usman start everything to explain what we're gonna talk about and stuff like that, I want to say something. Before that. Oh, don't, don't start. No, no, I will start. Don't, so, man. Are you quiet be... now. Quiet. Okay. Let me wait. I gotta change uh, it. I forgot to change it. <laughs> is it was... the camera on me now? It's on you now, Please, yeah. put it on me. It's an important thing. Mm. So, I want to say something for uh, one special guy, which I'm pretty sure he wake up like 4 o'clock in the morning and watching us, because at the moment in some places in the world it's like 4 o'clock in the morning. Oh, the guy from and, New Zealand! Uh, quiet now. Okay. So... Uh, we have a special, special fun down in Australia and I'm pretty sure he had a birthday last week, exactly on Tuesday, but we, we don't have a show, live show. And in Australia it's crazy, crazy lockdown at the moment. The guy can't celebrate, oh. but he wake up every time on Tuesday at 4 o'clock in the morning to oh, watch us. Oh, that is so So the amazing. guy is called Kevin, Kevin Pun, or Pun. I'm sorry if I can't say the surname right. Just, just blame but, the fact that you're Bulgarian. Uh, say yes, I, I'm a foreign person. Obviously, <laughs> Australia is very far away from me. But Kevin, if you're watching us, if you're hearing us, uh, happy birthday with a little bit of delay. And I'm hope, uh, I'm hope, I'm hopefully that we're gonna cheer you a little bit with the with the shout out and. Uh, yeah, I mean he's freaking waking up. You're at... in Australia. I wanna be in Australia. I don't care about the lockdown, but I wanna go there in Australia. So. Why the, one day we're going to go to Australia for the, the yeah. cigar prices are like ridiculous anyway. Why would you go there for? Well, I, I like poisonous animals. You like poisonous animals? Is that what it is, huh? Yeah, you know, New Zealand is, is Australia. New Zealand is a child dream to go there. So uh, big shout to Kevin. Watch us. And yeah, I'm hopefully, that's, that's hopefully, cool, you know, the hopefully fact that you are awake and watching us now, you know, you're not asleep in the one show which we're going to celebrate you. I know the one. The, <laughs> The one show that I'm single-handedly... Listen, let me tell you something, okay? Every time we do a show, me and Ray, I mean, me and Alex, we do all the work, okay? We put the shit together, we put the cameras up and whatever. Fair enough, Alex does the majority of the work, okay? But that's his job. You know, Alex, I'm sorry. That's what he does, right? He does a good job. That's why he does a better job than I do. But Ray, Ray, man, he fuck. Look at him. Just yeah, they can't him. see me. You need to change look the camera. He just <laughs> sits there, right? Happy as Larry, just chilling, just straight up my, chilling. My smoking arm is injured, so I need to be careful now. I have your smoking only one arm. Is, yeah. is he called your smoking arm? Yeah, exactly. It's That's your smoking arm. arm huh? Yeah. Do you use it for anything else? 
No, I'm usually right-handed, you know. <laughs> and I have wife. I don't, you know, I'm not one of you. Oh, man. But yeah, so normally we do all the technical work and Ray just turns up. And today he just sat, he's just been a backseat driver complaining the whole time. Like, oh, Uzma, we're going to be late, innit? We're going to be fucking late. Chill, man, let me do this. You know, even Andre's like, even, even Andre was like, oh, sounds good and looks good. See, that was all me. Yeah, but be- because Alex prepared everything before we <laughs> go in Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he did. Yeah, 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 yeah. Alex came over earlier today, right? Came and prepped the, uh, the Atom Mini and he did all the uh, technical stuff. And he goes, okay, just press play. You'll be fine. And I'll be like, okay, then. And it wasn't, obviously. Yeah, That's why we late. It wasn't fine. It still wasn't fine. <laughs> what are you smoking, man? A cigar? Introduce it, man. I don't know what to introduce me. I'm not a specialist in those brands. You're the fun You're not here. a specialist. You're literally smoking it and you're telling me you're not a specialist in these kind of brands. Don't show off with your Zippo, man. I got a Zippo too. <sighs> no good as mine. Mine? Mine's pretty nice. Which, you know, I've got my... Um... Mine is vintage. Mine's uh, custom. Mine is vintage custom. Mine's... Shut up. Mine's gold. <laughs> gold. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <socks>. <laughs> um, yeah, we... we... I'm gonna smoke uh, Davidoff Nicaragua in a Diadema. Um, literally, I smoked one a few weeks ago on a mini review, and I'm gonna smoke my last one. We'll see how is it. I'm gonna call bullshit on the Vitola on that one because that's not a Diadema. You know what Diadamas are really like, right? They're those huge, massive cigars. That's just a normal freaking Figurado. I don't know why it's yeah, called Yeah, Figurado is, I think Figurado is a little figurado. bit bumpy in the middle. It's a double figurado, right? Yeah, it's a diadema. No, man. I mean, a Salomon is it's more closer to a Salomon. It's not a diadema. Salomon is bigger. Okay, it's um, similar to... Um, I'll show you after the show the list with the Vitolas, Vitularios. I've, I've seen it. I went through the Davidoff Academy and I looked through all of them, right? And... Not only the Davidoff ones, you know, the, some neutral. Okay. You know what, this is tough, you know, having to go back and forth trying to click this every time we talk. You need let to me, prepare listen. something in you and just... <laughs> let, me, let me light my cigar first and then we can piss about with all this. Um, by the way, AJ Millership, AJ, um, not the uh, AJ from London, um, but AJ Millership, one of our viewers, he's smoking the um, signature number two as well. So yeah, we've got the same cigar today. I'm smoking the Davidoff signature number two. Um, this is one of the classic good cigars, isn't it? Ray, get off your phone, man. We're going to answer questions later. Don't worry, man. Don't worry. No, you don't worry, I can man. multitask as well. I can't multitask, okay? I'm already multitasking right now. How did they manage to pull? You see, they're not asking me the questions. People are asking me questions. Yeah, okay, guys. We're going to handle questions um, at an hour in. And we're going to handle questions uh, in the last 15 minutes. And I think that's the best way to do this because otherwise, um, with me trying to do this, and manage Ray, and manage the console, and smoke my cigar. I, don't, I'm, I think I'm gonna have a nervous breakdown, man. So, Ray, put your phone down, man. Yeah, yeah at, the guy just sending me compliments. No, no, no. I need show to see me my compliments. Show him what you were doing. Yeah, I was on my phone. Yeah, what was on? Yeah, I was reading the compliments. Some guy asking me how I tied. They're curious about how I tied my tie today. No one cares about your tie, man. Yeah, because my hand is injured. People care about me, not like you. You know. <laughs> what was the first? What was the first question I asked you when you came in? How are you came. doing, man? How's your arm? And you're like, oh, my arms, oh, oh, I can't, I can't. <laughs> Actually, to be fair, you know. No, I managed to tie my bad. tie, but I asked my wife to put the button on my back. <laughs> because <laughs> I can't lift that hand that high. Was she a button? No, that was a button, not butter, button. Oh, button. Button, but you don't know what's that because you don't use that kind of, you know, accessories, of shut, course. Shut up. You're from Bradford. Shut up, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Did you finally manage to see how it's worked out? It still sucks, man. Listen, man. This, this, this cutter, I still, I, I still don't like it. Every time, I'm, every time I'm talking, I cut away to you. So I'm going to have to like, figure that one out. Alex, how would you do it, man? Please, Alex. What is he? Yeah, look at it. Mine's fine. Yeah, it's yeah, fine. Yeah. Yeah. But I did it from the first time. There's the cup. I got There's it right. The yeah, there's my cup. Look. But look you how, it look twice. how small it is. Mine's better. Mine's brass. Wait, show everyone yours. Mm. 
A knife. That's not a knife. <laughs> this is a knife. This is a knife. Anyway, Boom. what are we talking about today? You can tell. Um, we're talking about Davidoff. <sighs> I can finally sit down and I've got my cigar. Oh my God, I can breathe. I mean, technically, I guess. So what are we going to talk about today? We're talking about Davidoff. Hence the Davidoff cigars. Ray's smoking a Davidoff. I'm smoking a Davidoff. I think a couple of you guys or a bunch of you guys are smoking Davidoff cigars as well. So we're going to talk about Davidoff as a company. And we're going to be discussing what they, you know, some of the history, some of the um, modern day stuff that's going on with the company. And we're also going to do some complaints and we're also going to celebrate them a little. Yeah, you know, you're, you're now almost fully qualified Davidoff for the table, you know, sales yeah. assistant. So you know a lot of stuff now. <laughs> what do I know? I don't know what you don't know. You will find out what you know. <laughs> Fuck all, man. <laughs> I was going through the um, academy and the academy is actually quite cool. So Davidoff have their own Davidoff Academy, right? I mean, for, for someone like you, I think it's going to be really, really frustrating because you're just going to go through information that you know so well already that you're just going to get bored. Oh, as I usually say, you know, even if it's a that small, tiny piece of uh, information, if I learn, mm. it's helpful for me. So once I complete it, I can tell you, I didn't complete it all because I literally no, don't have almost I'm, any time. I'm telling and you, And it's a huge course, so... I'm telling you um, right now, you're going to get bored through it. It doesn't matter. As I say, the stuff which, I'm, which I know and I'm bored, I'm going to skip them. I'll go to the, you know, to the stuff which I don't know. Obviously, I don't know everything about Davidoff. I'm not a... Uh, Davidoff, uh, you know, guy uh, by any mean, I never worked for Davidoff or something like that. So mm. I don't know everything. I know a lot of stuff, but uh, it's not only Davidoff. They they say some stuff which are pretty much for all kind of cigars, not only Davidoff, specialized yeah. in Davidoff, you know, like regions, like uh, tobacco wrappers, leaves and stuff. So it's interesting, interesting uh, idea. I think uh, quite a lot of the stuff, uh, the same as the cigar uh, sommelier diploma, which I complete. Uh, just not the examples and not with Davidoff cigars or anything. So it looked interesting, as I say. But that's if, why I think, like, for example, when you were doing this Amelia course, right? Even you did tell me this, okay? So it's not like I'm making this up. You were, uh, because the information was so straightforward and easy for you, you did get kind of get bored whilst you were, you know, quote unquote, studying for it. So... I didn't be in Borton. Okay, maybe familiar. not bored, but you I were just, like, you were like, I this found isn't... it easy. Yeah. Not bored, easy because I, let's say on the Somalia course, I know 40 to 50% of the material there. I know it already. Yeah. Another, the, the rest of the information, I didn't know it. It mm. was so helpful. I'm very, you know, grateful for that. Oh, fair enough. And I'm hoping uh, Davidoff will learn on something new, which, you know, I'm always looking for, uh, for new knowledge about the cigars. That's why I complete the Somalia course. That's why I, I was happy when uh, we started the Davidoff Academy because obviously I think I can learn some new stuff in there. Mm, mm. How's your cigar so far in terms of like the uh, initial impressions? It's very mild. Really? Yeah. Nicaraguan cigar mild? Absolutely mild and bear in mind that's not my first cigar of the day so mm. uh, mild. Um, I expect a little bit more let's say pepper, pepper. at least. Yeah. Yeah. Spiciness. Davidoff. It's nothing here so far. Davidoff cigars in my experience tend to have that. Spe uh, spicy pepperiness, which I really like. Have you noticed, I, this This could be just me, but I find that you know how people, when they do blind tests for Cuban cigars, they can immediately tell it's a Cuban cigar. Like Cuban cigars have that unique-ish flavor profile. Do you know what I mean? Have you noticed, this could be just me, but I find Davidoff have a unique flavor profile as well. No? You smoke more Davidoff than me, probably that's why. Every time I smoke a Davidoff, they, they, it, it's a profile that I've only found with Davidoff cigars, with no other cigar manufacturer. It's very, very unique, like the peppery spiciness. I mean, ev almost every newer cigar that I've smoked has some degree of pepperiness, some degree of uh, spiciness, some degree. Maybe it's subtle, maybe more, but they all have some degree. And I like spicy, peppery cigars. I like that, okay? And so I kind of look for that in some cigars as well. But the way that it's delivered, the way that it kind of tastes, the flavor, Davidoff is always relatively unique. Have you noticed that with any other particular brand? Well, yeah, there's a brands which are unique by the taste, but as I say, Davidoff, I can't recognize every Davidoff, obviously. But if we're talking for brands which I can't recognize, um, 
I can recognize most of the black label stuff. Mm. Black label trading company, it's unique, strong, full body, meaty cigars. Most of them, of course, not every cigar. Um, brands, I would probably say that I can recognize most of the Perdomos as well, but not only because of the taste, by the look of the cigar. They have that unique look, you know, bigger engaged, smooth, like nice, silky wrapper. Well, some of them, some there's other cigars as well, not you know, not only per, Perdomo with that kind of uh, look, but usually the size, because Perdomo, I never smoke a small Perdomo size. So, um, yeah, it's it's hard to try to, to recognize a brand on a blind taste. Uh, it's usually, I was a few times, even when I do the, the blind tasting for the magazine, I was trying not to guess the brand, but literally when I smoke it, I say, okay, that sounds like a Perdon, uh, per, per, uh, Padron. In one of the occasions, I was almost entirely sure, even without trying to guess, I was entirely sure that's uh, Padron 7000. Size and everything, you know. And it ended up like, you know, uh, it was a San Lotano Dominicano, <laughs> at the end, which is a very different, completely different cigar. Nothing, yeah. you know, as a, as a. But you haven't, I guess, from Davidoff, you know, maybe you haven't smoked enough of the Davidoff to be able to make. I think I can recognize most of the old Davidoffs. Yeah, but you Not the Cuban loads. ones. Yeah, yeah. The white bands, you know. 2000 before 2000 that white mild davidos they are very the the wrapper is very specific it's very thin silky but it's literally very fragile that was the problem on that davidos back in the time the wrappers was so fragile you can't literally keep aging and stuff like that and their taste is very specific mild and 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 very milky you know chocolate milk that kind of stuff have you got any left a lot hook me up man you don't understand that cigar. What do you mean I don't understand? You're too young, man. Well, too young. How? What? <laughs> I'm not too young for a 1970s Cuban, but I'm too young for a 2000 David. <laughs> Your maths is way off, man. <laughs> one day, one day. I don't have many, but yeah, I have few. Mm. So let's talk about Davidoff, the company, because as a company, in fact, let's not even talk about the company. Let's talk about the people behind the company who started off the actual business. And Zeno Davidoff, he's the most famous Davidoff. Well, he's the only Davidoff that's kind of famous, if effectively, right? Um, but Zeno Davidoff has done so much for the cigar industry in his lifespan. He's quite possibly the most influential person in the cigar industry over the last like couple of hundred years. Would you? What would you say to that? Arguably, I'd say he's most influential. Depend, because uh, influential can be. Marvin Shankin as well, the guy behind Cigar Aficionado. He, he created the That's cigar boom. That's a good bomb. point. He created the cigar boom. It depends on what uh, opinion you mean. You think it's influential because what what he influenced? Well, the the claims are actually I'm not going to use the word claim because if I use the word claim, it makes it sound like I'm trying to like debunk something. That's not that's not what I'm trying to do. Um, but. The idea is that Zeno Davidoff essentially made Cuban cigars famous in Europe. And he built up the Cuban cigar, um, the allure for the Cuban cigar in Europe. I mean, Sp Spain had been consuming, Sp Spain had been producing cigars for a long time. Then they found that, wait a minute, we can produce them in more fertile lands in Cuba because it's more effective to produce tobacco there and just ship it across. So they had been producing and consuming uh, Cuban cigars for a long time anyway. But then Zeno Davidoff, basically almost essentially took it worldwide to some extent no, I'm, but not just that. i'm not entirely agree with that because obviously before that mm. you have hunters and franco you have uh, people which you know even uh, merakfell family before they become cameron and growers and stuff they import uh, cigars in europe cuban cigars yeah i'm not saying that i'm it's... not saying that people weren't i'm saying that he kind he he took it to that next level where cuba became far more prominent in the cigar and high-end tobacco industry to a point where they want the you know cuba tobacco contacted zeno to produce their own brand in the 1970s i think uh zeno becomes zeno and and name what is it at the moment it, it's been back in the time when he started the the wine series the chateau yeah, yeah. that's when zeno actually when he, becomes when he someone on the map when he produced um cigars well he didn't produce them he basically give, put his name to well, it 
the, the Roma say he you. blend them. No, they Davidoff he helped cons- with the blending. Davidoff uh, confirmed that as well. Yes, so, uh, so it's not that's when Zinu, Zinu actually came up on the map and mm. been face of something. Before that was a retailer in Switzerland, which uh, helped a lot to grow the business in that part of Europe, especially mm. during the wars, uh, you know, be- when literally every country was in war, you know, Switzerland being a little bit of neutral. They, they were neutral the whole time, yeah. So yeah. they literally saved a lot of cigars back in the time because some of the biggest retailers in Germany, in France... In France, they, yeah. They're gone. Exactly. They've been destroyed, they've been ruined. But Zeno well, saved a lot. Well, the French went over to um, Zeno and asked him, look, these are all our cigars, we don't want them to be destroyed. Can you store them for us and protect them? And Zeno was like, sure, no problem. And that's one of the reasons, uh, That's I think that's what initially made him who he was because he was he was relatively famous as a as a retailer anyway right in his own right in his own industry he was quite famous as a as a retailer in switzerland but then as the war progressed and as france wanted to protect its own or citizens of france wanted to protect their cigars and they went over to zeno that's kind of what initially put him on the map that and and also the because in europe yes the german <coughs> cigars was known but not I don't think there was the most selling cigars in mm. Europe because Germany produced a lot of cigars. Switzerland yes. produced cigars. Yes. Belgium, Netherlands, yeah. Spain, all that countries. England produced cigars. France, every Europe country produced a lot of cigars. Of course, different quality as the Cubans, but way cheaper. Yeah. So for the price of one cigar, one Cuban cigar, you buy a box of uh, whatever other cigars you have around Precisely. you. Precisely. So Zinu was the guy which defend the Cuban cigars and try to change the taste in the people. Literally say smoke one, but smoke quality. You know, don't Precisely, just yeah. keep uh, 20 cigars in your mouth all day mm. and you're just doing nothing just because of the sect, saint of the keeping a smoke in your mouth. Smoke one, but quality. That's why Cuba started recognizing him as well. You know, mm. it's, it was a profound Cuban defender, I would say that way, maybe. You know, he always proclaimed the Cubans a way better quality, taste, and everything. European and brands. he changed the yeah. opinion of a lot of people. He did. It's uh, a lot of uh, local people, a lot of uh, farmers around the Europe, a lot of retailers which carry on only on the European cigars. Speaking, speaking of a farmer, um, there's quite a nice story that I, uh, that I um, heard about Zeno Davida. For, in fact, Zeno actually mentioned this in an interview. Um, he was in his store, farmer comes up to his store, and it sounds like a, a store, you know, a store, um, like a joke where, you know, two guys walk into a bar. <laughs> Um, farmer walks into his store and the farmer talks to him about this exact subject, you know, the quality and um, the price. And he goes, well, you know, your cigars are quite expensive. And the farmer says, look, I'm a well to do, you know, I'm a successful farmer. I'm not exactly someone who's, who's broke. I've got money. I'm, I'm successful. But why would I want to spend so much more money on your cigars than a lot of the cigars that are around here? So Zeno explained, well, you know, it's quality, right? Yes, they are more expensive, but they're also much better as well. So... He bought a box, took the cigars back home, and then the next day he came back with the box and he wasn't happy and he complained. He goes, look, you know, these cigars keep going out. They keep going out. What's going on? What's the problem? So Zeno basically said, okay, well, let's try one. Let's see what's going on. You know, what are you doing when you smoke? Because the way that you smoke a cigar is also important as well, right? You can't just, if your cigar is going out, chances are it's something that you're doing, not the cigar. Nine times out of ten. So they sat down and they smoked one of his cigars from the box. And the guys, the interviewers, they started laughing. Oh yeah, of course, you know, you're going to smoke the cigar that you sold him. But, one, but the interesting thing that he said at this point was, yeah. And the reason why I smoked one of the cigars from his box is because had I have picked out another cigar, he could have said, oh, you, you picked something different. You, you know, we, you're, we're testing something better over here, but you're selling me a dud. And I thought that was quite an, int- you know, he, you could tell that he was, he he thought things through properly he understood what he was doing he wasn't just trying to be polite he was he made sure that the cigars that they tested in his store and smoked together to show him exactly how to smoke and how to prevent cigars from going out and why these cigars are of the quality that you know Zeno says he smoked one of his cigars and showed them and i thought you know shows someone who's like switched on about um the uh the consequences of just subtle actions that you may take. Because he's right. If he did pick out one of his cigars from his humidor and then they smoked that, he would have walked away. And then later on, if he'd made the same mistake, he'd be like, oh, wait, maybe he sold me a dud. And then he could have walked away and said, nah, Zeno's a bad tobacconist. 
he just sells you duds, but then he's a, he's a crook or something like that. Do you know what I mean? He could have just left him with a bad taste. So, yeah, I thought that was quite interesting from Zeno. But let's talk about the the uh, the origins, because um, <clears throat> his family are originally from old Russia, right? Ukraine, when Ukraine was part of Russia, around the time of Tsar Nicholas II, he was a bit of a numpty, really, wasn't he? I don't know if you know anything about that guy. Well, back in the I mean, time, you're a historian anyway. Back in that times so in Russia, there was a uh, crazy times. You know, there was a uh, revolutions. There was uh, all kind of stuff. You know, our Russia always been crazy. There's yeah, so the many times. revolutions at that time. Man. Yeah, it's Eastern Europe. It was just Europe. back and forth. Eastern Europe, man. It's been the same in all the countries in Eastern Europe. Constant revolutions and stuff, you know. And the, he got his ass kicked by Japan. The, yeah. The, the, the Japan, J Japan at that time was like, what? Some, almost like a backwater country. It wasn't anything significant in, by any means, right? And it wasn't, not at that time. Like, uh, what, late 1800s, not early 1900s? Well, Japan, I would say, pff, that's, I'm not, you know... No, I don't know the history of Japan, obviously, but Japan always been an island country, always been a, that island. Nobody conquered them, nobody tried mm. to do anything there. No, no, so, no. Jap the Japanese moved over onto the mainland and kicked their ass. Yeah, that was. I thought that was quite crazy. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, Nicholas II, he was going through a whole bunch of things. He was getting his ass kicked by the, the Japanese on one side, and then he had protests on the other side. If you say if you say Nicholas II on the Russian guy. Who, Smack your face. Yeah. It's called Nikolai. It's whatever, man. We yeah. call him Nicholas, Nikolai. okay? Little Nicky. We call him <laughs> Nicky B. Nikki. Okay? Zar Nicky the second, in it? <laughs> Nicky from the block, man. <laughs> Nikolai. Look, we have different ways of saying things. Chances are, no one in Russia calls Russia Russia. Yeah, nobody. There you go, man. We have different ways of saying things. Russia. They precisely. <laughs> How do you say Bulgaria in Bulgaria? Bulgaria. 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 Okay, so slightly different. We're we're quite close in that regard. I was taking a puff break, man. Fair How's enough. your cigar? How's your cigar? Mine's smoking way too fast, though. Look at this, man. Yeah, you smoke fast. I'm not. This is just really open. It's like super open. Oh, it's been okay. what, 20 minutes already on that? Yeah. How long yeah. do you expect to smoke it? I wanted to smoke it for two hours, man. No, you can't smoke that two hours, man. If you smoke that for two hours, go on the championship. The world championship. That's not a two hour cigar. That's what, that's number two. That's not one cigar. <clears throat> yeah, I know. That's number two. If it was if it was an inch longer, it lasted two hours. Weird, isn't it? I love that cigar stuff. Why anyway. don't smoke them? Hmm? Why don't smoke them? Don't I'm say you love Lanceros because we will have another comment from uh, some guy which raving about that we like Lanceros but we don't smoke Lanceros. Well, I have the comment. I have the comment in the in that which frustrates me. You know, I usually don't care about the comments and the, if the, if it's criticizing me, I'm okay. I'm all right with the critics. But if the critics is relevant, not someone to tell me that I don't smoke small vitos because he see me try three times on the live smoking a bing ring gauges. But I smoke. I don't know, maybe two or three cigars a day. Okay. Half of them are Lanceros. Just to, there's a reason why there's a reason why I don't smoke Lanceros on a live stream. Because I love Lanceros and I want to sit back and enjoy them. I don't wanna and I'm not trying to be flippant here by saying that we're wasting cigars, because we're not. I mean I'm obviously I'm smoking a Davidoff number two. Generally speaking, we tend to smoke really nice cigars, right? The last live stream I smoked in Grand Britannia regional edition. So we tend to smoke good cigars, but there are a couple of criteria that need to be met when we're smoking a cigar on the live stream. First thing is, it needs to last a long time. So big ring gate cigars tend to last a little bit longer. Lanceros, they don't last as long as a, obviously, it's not gonna last as long as a long, heavy ring gate cigar. Not well, depends, two hours. Lancero for me is two hours. Uh, for me it's I smoke hour total for less than two hours. For me it's about an hour and a half for Lancero. Um, um, Probably the only cigar I will smoke more than two hours. Uh, that will be some Gordo slow burning. Like to, earlier today, I smoked mm. very slow burn Gordo. Uh, but it's I want to experiment and try different cigars. That's why I don't smoke only Lanceros. But more than a one third of my cigars are Lanceros. One day I promise I'll show you some of my stuff, and you see, I've got crazy amount of Lanceros, which you know I enjoy them, but not on our lives, not when I do reviews and anything, but. At the moment, half of the cigars I smoke, they're either for some live Zoom review or whatever. Mm. So 
I prefer to enjoy the Lancero when I have time to enjoy it as well. Same again. I mean, <clears throat> Lancero is my favorite Vitola, so I want to sit back and enjoy the cigar properly. Like right now, when we're doing the live stream, we can't really, because we're focusing on the actual live stream, we're focusing on the topic more so than we're focusing on the cigar. So it kind of, it's, it's not a waste because it's not a waste. It's not a waste at all. I mean, still enjoying a cigar, but you don't enjoy it in the same way. Do you know what I mean? You don't think about the cigar as opposed <clears throat> to think when you, when, when you want mm. to read the cigar. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I like to say when you read the cigar, you want to enjoy, you want peace, you want a little Precisely. bit of music. You don't want to talk with anyone. You don't want to do anything just and smoke and read the cigar. Mm. If you don't read the cigar, if you want a company chatting a lot, you're still enjoyable, but it's a different experience. Yeah, that's how different. you enjoy with another comp- with another friend. It could be the same brand, same Vitola, same cigar, even, but it's different experiences, enjoyment, not uh, enjoyment as itself. Yeah, you know, and it's yeah, that's a little bit off the topic, but yeah, bit off the topic, but that's essentially why we don't smoke our favorite favorite cigars, our favorite Vitolas generally on the live stream, and also because Ray wants to show off a lot of different brands as well, not just what I show off and what I tend to show off are generally just Cubans. Because in most of our live streams, I'm smoking Cubans. So Ray wants to kind of do something a little bit different and show brands which most people may not have heard of. So that's essentially why <clears throat> we don't smoke our favorite Vitolas and we don't smoke our favorite cigars on the live stream. But anyway, back to the subject. Um, I thought we'd address that just in case, you know, um, it comes up again. Uh, but yeah. So, <clears throat> lots of political turmoil. <laughs> Zah Nikki was just, you know, having a hissy fit the whole time. And then 1906, Zeno's born. 1911, they move over to Geneva. I think there was a, there was a plan or there was a, the ideal circumstance would have been for them to move over to the States. Because, <clears throat> especially around that time, the Jewish community and even like a, a, a up until like the 1930s and whatever, the Jewish community weren't exactly treated in the best of fashions. And I think in the US, they were finding better success and more effect, you know, just a, a better life for themselves. So they were, ideally they would have wanted to move there, but it's expensive. So they settled in Geneva, neutral country. And I think it was a good move. It was a brilliant, in fact, it was a brilliant move, obviously in hindsight, so a fantastic move. And as soon as they moved to Geneva in 1911, almost immediately the Davidoff store was born. Because Davidoff, maybe not have been called Davidoff Geneva, but it was called Davidoff Tobacco or something to that extent. <clears throat> so a Davidoff Tobacco store was quintessentially founded in 1911. There's a misconception here though. <coughs> I don't know why I'm coughing so much right now. It's a drink, man, too much sugar. Um, there's a misconception when you go onto Wikipedia or when you go onto a lot of the um, non-official Davidoff literature, it says that Zeno Davidoff founded Davidoff, the Davidoff of Geneva, which is not true, because in 1911 Zeno Davidoff was five years old. He found fuck all at the age of five. You know, <laughs> it was actually his dad, his father. I don't, I don't know that information re- re- relate to the the name on the company or the shop on the, the because you mentioned the Zeno's father opened the, the shop in nine, 1911 but and Davidoff, maybe they relate the Zeno basically being you know ancestry you know they, that being his uh, his uh, family shop uh, mm-hmm. family owned business well, he was founded and he by, literally carry on from his father's he stuff. carried on from his father but yeah. the founder wasn't Zeno it wasn't, but you don't know. I, I don't think is there any official information what the name on the shop the shop was back in the time, because if maybe I can recall, the shop it was called David. It was it did have the Davidoff name on it. But maybe it and was also, like tobacco news, tobacco shop by and ex also, Davidoff or something like that. You know, not like it Davidoff, wasn't Davidoff company of Geneva. proper. Yeah, Davidoff yeah. of Geneva or something. Yeah, but Davidoff of Geneva does confirm that they were founded in 1911. Now, if you're founded in 1911. If you're found, you, can, you can't have both. You can't be founded by Zeno Davidoff and be founded in 1911. You're either founded in 1911 when Zeno was five years old or you're founded by Zeno in 1930. So pick one. You can't have both. So as far as I can see, Davidoff themselves don't have any literature conf- claiming that Zeno was the founder of Davidoff. As far as I could see, I did double check. I went through their website and material and their about and their history and everything as well. 
But the misconception with a lot of people, especially on Wikipedia, is that Zeno Davidoff is the founder of Davidoff of Geneva, which is not true because I was five years old. <clears throat> 1911 is when Davidoff of Geneva was founded, and the true founder is Henry Davidoff. Henry Davidoff being the father of Zeno. Unfortunately, there's virtually no information about this man, which is a little bit of a shame. It's a bit disappointing for, for me. I don't know if it's disappointing for anyone else, but it's disappointing that a company as, as huge and as influential as Davidoff has virtually no information about their own founder. I find that a little no, disappointing. No, I didn't, I didn't, honestly, I didn't do any research back in the times to see actually if I can find any. I know Zinu have a few books, but none of them is on English. Mm. So that's a little bit tricky. I don't know any French or German or whatever. Well, I spoke to Roy and Roy said, unfortunately, there's no, not very much information or any at all about Henry. Fair point. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they don't know. Mm. Because, you know, Zin, the company, which is, you know, the Davidoff now is completely different than what was Davidoff mm. 60, 70, 80 years ago. Precisely. So I don't think it's, there's even a single person, uh, you know, still working in the company from the who's that alive times, that time, you know, yeah. who's alive, you know. Yeah. Maybe the, I don't know how old should be the oldest person at the moment in Davidoff who actually work maybe with Zeno. Mm. But it must be very few people, you know, back in the time working with Zeno and... You know, even back in the time, if you work with Zeno, you won't be that high in the company to be able to ask him that kind of stuff. Precisely. So you may be working <coughs> the company in some point, some position, but you're not going to go and ask Zeno about his family, his dad, his mm. mom, and his father, everyone around. And also, when Zeno, Dav when Zeno Davidoff was the, still the owner of the company, if you were working at that time, then it was a much smaller company. It was a much different company. It's not the same Davidoff of Geneva that it was... Um, at that point, right? Because he was bought out. We'll, we'll get to that anyway, but we'll, we'll, we'll move on to that subject anyway. But I just find it a little disappointing that Davidoff doesn't have any information about their actual founder. Yes, they've got lots of information about Zeno, which is very appreciated because Zeno's done so much for the cigar industry. And maybe that's what it is. Maybe it's the fact that Henry Davidoff, you know, he was content with um, having a relatively high-end tobacco store but not trying to push the envelope too far and then Zeno came along because in 1930 it doesn't say exactly what year in 1930 in the 1930s maybe it could have maybe it might have been exactly 1930 but in the 1930s Zeno after his travels to Cuba and uh, travels around the uh, uh, Med not the Mediterranean sorry the Caribbean er uh, area learning about how cigars and everything is produced he came back and he essentially took over the store from his family. And he then was at the helm and he started managing the company. And at that point, that's when things started getting really interesting with um, the cigar industry. Because he was one of the few people who, as you said, was, was vehemently in support or vehemently supported Cuban cigars. And then Cuban cigars started coming into the country and his most famous saying is, smoke less but smoke better, right? Or something to that extent. You know, smoke better quality cigars but smoke fewer cigars. And that was kind of what it was. And it was, it's incredible <clears throat> what Zeno was able to achieve in the 40 years between 1930 and 1970, up in, uh, at which point his company was bought out by Ottinger AG. Was it Ottinger AG? Ottinger, I don't know the yeah. abbreviation after that. Hmm. Smoke break, man. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people say that Zeno Davidoff um, invented the desktop humidor. What do you think about that? Yeah, I'm agree with that. That's yep. the only information. Zeno Davidoff invented few stuff. Mm. The desktop humidor, basically box which can keep your cigars in the perfect condition for yeah. a slightly longer storage. And the uh, first humidification system in a store. In Geneva. The walk-in humidor, right? Yeah, the yeah. communication yeah. system for the, that kind of humidor, <coughs> you know, way before the people down in South America to start implement that kind of stuff into the yeah. their humidors down there, you know, mm. the humidification rooms and aging rooms and everything. Zeno Davido have already, be, already been there. Yeah. This is not to say that um, there were no humidors and no humidification systems prior to him. Obviously, that's not the case. 
the the point is that the desktop image or the smaller version that was something that which i mean it's it's a derivative of the larger cabinets and so on and so forth but the larger cabinets you know they're much bigger they they're not the same they're, de they're designed and used in a different way um but they're obviously they, they're essentially derivatives of that so humidors have existed for a long time that's and smaller-ish well, humidors have as desktop, well? Desktop, not in that uh, way. You know, the desk, I don't think people keep in desktop humidors or any way of desktop humidors. No, 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 no. Sorry, yeah, I agree with you. I agree with you. The, desktop humidors were yeah, produced by... Cigars was yeah. mostly selling in uh, wooden boxes, not in a card box, even, you know, in a proper wooden boxes. But they barely managed to close. I, you have an old box over there. You can yeah. see how it's closed, you know. Mm. Literally, there's a two millimeters gap on every side. So you can't keep that, especially in a... No. In a dry countries, it's obviously they gone dry. Precisely. So that's how Zeno came with the idea with a small humidor where basically you might keep your daily, weekly smokes or going to the party but or some events for, or something. But, but it was more for the office. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's what it was. Where you don't have space to put the biggest wardrobes and cabinets and yeah. walk-ins and stuff. You're, you're working, you know, it's your, it's your work environment. So if, you, if it's your work environment, you don't necessarily have a big space to kind of put this massive chunk of wood and, and store your cigar. So what you want is something you can have on your desk. So whilst you're working, you can just flick it open, pick out a cigar and a smoke one. That's what you want. But you want your cigars to remain fresh and remain humidified. And that's what the desktop humidor essentially was for. Yeah. Brilliant invention. Very, very um, helpful. I mean, I have a desktop humidor. I love that thing. You know, I just have it yeah. literally next to my, da on my of, desk. David of Humidor, the old vintage David of Humidor is a really nice build. I, I have, I've been lucky to have a couple of them in the past. Obviously, I give it to her friends and stuff, but they was way different build than other stuff I have from that age. You know, especially mine, oldest one was from the 70s and it was one of piece. You know, you, mm. it's complete different build. You can see it's the, the, the wood, the, the level, the, the level of manufacturing is nothing like, yeah, they are expensive, even but the now. But, but they're the kind of humidors that you'd expect, like, what's that company? Ellie Blue or something? Ellie Blue. Yeah, it's kind of like that. It's on that level of quality. So you can still purchase... You can still Honestly, I think David of a better quality. Yeah? Ele, yeah. Okay. Ele, Ele Blue is a little bit more of a marketing point. Mm -hmm. You know, they're fancy looking, the nice colorful pictures, yeah, lithographs yeah. and stuff. Uh, David of a 99% of pure brown humidors. So Darko, it's entirely like, functional, but super yes, quality functional. With the nice, uh, nice uh, system inside, you know, usually the the gauges for the humidity humidity level temperature level are like nice old swiss watches you know yeah. they don't look like uh 10 pound or 15 pounds yeah. from ebay or something <laughs> they are look literally look like some swiss made watch maybe in the beginning they use that kind of you know they have the temperature they have the humidity maybe they use some manufacturer down in in geneva or in switzerland to create that stuff but also the scissors, the iconic scissors of Davidoff. Mm. They all, all the humidors, all the old humidors, they have the magnets in there and the scissor in there. I was hoping to have my scissors in time so, for this show, but you know, they didn't arrive, unfortunately. Yeah, the, the scissors. So I don't know when, the, when they start the scissors, when they have the scissors, but uh, I've seen humidors from the 60s yeah. with the scissors. I don't know if it's before that, if it's since the beginning, you know, when Zinu started implementing that kind of humidors did he have the scissors because back in the time there's no really big ring edges yeah especially uh before 60s i never seen cigar with a bigger cup than 46 48 i'm talking before the 60s yeah 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 no i agree so with you. robusto 50 ring gauges coming come on the market probably 80s? around i've seen cigars from the 70s with 50 52 and 54 ring gauges okay 70s not cubans I, I didn't think about the product, but I think the Cubans have a 50 around that age as well. Yeah. But uh, I thought it was 80s when the uh, Cubans started doing 50s. I, I, I need to double check. As I say, okay, I, can't, yeah, yeah. I can't say for sure. But I could uh, be wrong. I could definitely, be wrong. I've seen because I have Hoya de Nicaragua, yeah. Viante, which is 52 ring gauge. Yeah, yeah, of course. From the 70s, yeah, yeah, early yeah. 70s. So if they have them, Cuba already is supposed to have them because everyone followed Cuba back in the time. Yeah. So if, if someone else, make, some other company make big ring gauges, Definitely Cuba already have them and uh, yeah, I need, to, I need to research for the Cubans, but I'm pretty sure there's no, not much brands making that kind of big ring gauges and the scissors, if I'm not wrong, they can cut 50. They're the same design. I think they Is can the cut 50. One? I think they're the same one. They have long scissors and it's short got, scissors, long, but yeah, literally yeah. the front part is the same. Only the... the, the I thought the, um, the, the head of the scissors... 
I don't think is different. Isn't it? Just the, the tail, you know, the, the what is called handles. Mm. Handles are longer and shorter. And yeah, I got, a, a, I got a long one, but they take like forever they to be delivered. They look better. They do look They're better. more expensive, but uh, yeah. It's a hundred pounds more expensive though. Are they? Yeah. Than the shorter. But they look way better. They look way better. Yeah, short The short face. one look like freaking nail clippers. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, I saw the short one and I was like, nope, not them. Not for me, man. I'll stay, I'll get the longer one. But yeah, definitely pricey. Um, oh, really pricey. They say it's staying, mm, I don't know. I'm not going to make any complaints about it just yet because I haven't even received it yet. But I'm excited about that. I was hoping that I would receive it in time for the live show so I could like do my David off show enough or whatever. But you know, <laughs> don't judge me, okay? He's already doing it. You don't have even at least David of matches. Do I have? No, I don't have Davidoff. Yeah, you should have a Davidoff matches at least. I'm smoking a Davidoff cigar, man. What more do you want me to do, man? I, if you're gonna I'm, fool. What, you want me to like fun... become a full freaking fanboy? Yeah. No, man. Why not? Because I'm not that deep in it, man. <laughs> well, so, 1930s to 1970s, that's when Zeno was essentially at the helm of the company and he was making all his moves, meeting up with you know, highly influential people, Rothschilds and Churchills and all those kinds of people and, and, and selling them cigars. And put your phone away, man. There's a lot of comments. I want to We'll get to them. Question. I promise. Listen, we got, what time is it? it we got seven minutes of okay. talking and then we're going to look at the comments. Okay, guys, I promise we're going to look at the comments. But we will, man. Chill your body. So 1930s, 1940s, that's when he was at the helm and he did basically the majority of um, his marketing and everything and, and developing his brand and making his name. That's when, when he was kind of really going for it. And up until like the 1970s, when did his brand come? 1970s, right? 1968. 1968, yeah. Two yeah. years before he, he was basically bought out. That's when the Chateau, Chateau, Mar Chateau Margo, I can't pronounce it. I can't pronounce there it. There are few. No, the first one. The first one. Which one is the first? I don't know. I, didn't know. I don't know which one is the first. The first one is the Chateau Margaux or something. Well, they, they started the Chateau line. You know, he loved wines. The most famous one, wines back in the time was that few French wines. You know, Yekem, Margaux. Um, all, all that. They're five, if I'm not mistaken. You know, I think I have all of them, but... <laughs> I don't look at him often, so as I say, I, I can't be bothered to name them all. But uh, yeah, the idea with the wines was uh, great for him. You know, when Cuba say we can, we want to make something with you. Yeah. We want to make a cigar with you. He and jumped in. Especially, yeah, but he have a request, you know, he, he's not like jump and say, yeah, come on, let's go, let's do 500 cigars or whatever. Mm. He just wants to be the person who picked the the leaves the blend he they definitely picked the cigars for his uh his blend because obviously for the europe the already the europeans having a developed palette for a nice refined decent cuban cigars and yes. if you don't want just to send him a machine made short filler precisely or, especially or if he's putting like his name to something especially yeah and yeah. and also he put his name but he also put the name of the wineries Mm. You know, that Chateau's in front, in French, you know, that winery uh, people. Mm. And he need to first to talk with them and literally uh, explain them why he wants to use their name. Mm. Because it's not just, I'm taking your name and put it on a cigar. Precisely. You know, Davidoff is one side, but all of them have a second name, you know, the, the Chateau, whatever. And yeah, he need to make, he wants to make sure that it is worth to do that. The people agree of that one. Because that was his favorite uh, wines back in mm. the time. And speaking speaking of wines, right? Um, I remember seeing this uh, short video clip of him meeting up with one of the Rothschilds, and you know the Rothschilds, the the the, the Rothschild dude, obviously stupidly wealthy guy, right? And they were having a conversation, and the Rothschild dude was like, "Yeah, but cigars aren't like wine. You know, wines you get from different regions. You know, they have different tastes. Like if you get a if you get a wine from Italy or a wine from, maybe not a wine. I don't know much about. It. But he was saying if you get a wine from different regions, you know, whatever, they're gonna have very different flavors, very different. And cigars aren't like that, you know. And Zeno was like, "Hell no!" He was like, "What are you on about? 
<laughs> what are you talking about? If you get cigars from Cuba or Honduras or whatever, you know, there's a massive difference in Rothschilds. Like, nah, it's a subtle difference. Because no, it's not a subtle difference. There's a huge difference. The, the flavor, the palate, the vitola, the way that it looks, everything is vastly different. And he just basically sat there and schooled him for like three minutes. Telling yeah, him about... As I say, you need to convince the people that mm. basically it is worth what he wants to do it. Yeah. You know, and, and I don't know, it's during our days now, that's one of the most collectible cigars, you know, maybe because of, uh, of the name they have, you know, Zino and the Cuba, and, you know, they don't produce them anymore. Maybe because of the collaboration between those uh, wine companies and, you know, the expensive wines back in the time, the French wines. But not just that, he was the first ever outsider in like forever to get a brand, to get a Cuban brand in his name? Yes and no. What no, was the last because, time? No, because there's a, like three or four more other guys as well. Tell me. Dunhill. Dunhill. Yeah. And the Dunhill is now more expensive than Davidoff. Yeah, they are. Way more expensive. Yeah. So, yeah, Dunhill is a different story anyway, but uh, Dunhill have them. Um, there's a Saudi Arabian prince as well. He have his own cigars from Cuba, KCA, whatever. So no one can buy them? Uh, well, I don't think they're available. They're very limited. There's a German guy as well make his own cigars in Cuba. Not now, back in the time. But uh, there was a few people. What, but Upman? No, no, no. The Upman. I mean, private. Oh, label. private, I see. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I think Dunhill become better than, uh, big, bigger than Davidoff. Because you can see Dunhill selection on the H. Upman, on the Monte Cristo, on the uh, Romeo and Julieta, on Hoyu. There's a Dunhill selection on them. And that's very collectible boxes. Mm. You know, they have a second stamp on the, on the box, which is not, is not just a label. It's a stamp engraved on the box and say Dunhill selection. They so tend to, I mean, I don't know. They're, they're not only, because they make Dunhills just as a private lane as well. You know, specialized Dunhill with the red band and everything. But they also make... Uh, cigars specialized for Dunhill clientele, mm. which make it way bigger because Zino produce how many Cuban brands? You know, five Chateaus, I think three or four other lines. Yeah, that was it. Like a Churchill as well. He produced the old the number Don one, Perignon. number two, uh, you know, I think uh, mm, one and two, and I don't think there's a more actually. A and part the of the Chateau line, yeah, there's a, there's a Davidoff number one, which is Lancero, number two, what you're smoking at the moment, yeah. Signature two and I but these don't are the, remember. These, this is the classic, and Davidoff. of course the David of eightieth, which is uh, which is way more expensive. That's my unicorn. Those are stupid. If someone asks me what cigar I want to smoke and uh, you know what's my dream cigar, I don't know how you get I managed a few times in the past in the years to find available cigars eightieth, but the price was always yeah, of course. They're like, what, um, 800 pounds a, a piece at the moment? Or something stupid? You know why? They've never been officially released for sale. They've never been for sale. Oh, yeah, because it was for his it 80th was event birthday. only. Event only. Yeah. In, back in Cuba. And that's why if, if anyone managed to get some, they just don't want to sell them. They are unsellable. Mm. So they're collectible as, a, as hell. You know, like, even, the, even I can find you the first Cohiba release to buy, but I can't find you the 80th. Yeah. You know, the last auction of Mitchell, there was an 80th box signed by Zino. What? Yeah, did you see that? No! Mitchell, last auction of Mitchell, Montego. Mitchell sold it? Yeah, yeah, 32,000. <laughs> what? For one? No, box of 10. Damn! 3,200 3, per cigar? Yeah, one of Pounds the... Or dollars? I think was 30, pound, I think was a pound. I, I don't want to be 100% entirely sure, but I think it's going like 30,000. And there was a full box. It's an interesting box because it's been opened like that, you know, like... Uh, yeah, but this one, this one was signed by Zeno, so it has One of the value. tubes inside was personally signed by Zeno on one of the dinners. So yeah, that's going to increase the value. And there was another one or two singles. They go for sale, not signed, obviously. There was a singles and they go for something like a thousand and something for a piece. That was the literally the only time I've seen those on an auction in the last... Were they in good condition? Five, smokable. Yeah? Yeah, th that's the only time I've seen them in an auction in the last five, six, maybe seven years. i never seen any of them in an auction. I so surprised when I saw them. Wow. Utterly insane. 80th, that, that was for his birthday, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Wow, ridiculous. 
32 grand. It's a big Vitola as well. What was it? I think it's Churchill or bigger than Churchill. Double Corona? Something like that. I don't want to research about that cigar because it's getting... It's scared. going to make you cry. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not going to make you cry. It's going to make my wallet cry. That's why I don't want to research that cigar. I don't want to touch it. I don't want to know anything about it. S sell it. The less I know, the less is better for my wallet. You still want it though. <laughs> I want it, but there's no widows. There's no widows. The widows of uh, those people are much smarter. They know what they've got. They can see the signature, they're like, nah, we're not selling this one. We're not selling this one. I think it's time for us to take some questions. What is it? We're a bit late now. No, we're almost on time. 9.02. So, Ray, do you want to have a look at some of the questions? Yeah. You can say what you're feeling on your cigars. In, in, in oh, I love this cigar. This is one of my favorites. This is probably one of the best Davidoff current line cigars uh, being produced. Signature number two. I don't think any of... There's a, there's a 702 version of this, right? Actually, Alex commenting here. <laughs> I know, I saw. I don't I want to ignore him because he's like, I'm pissed off with you, Alex. I thought you had my back. Look what I had to do by myself. Questions, right? It's only mostly comments so far. Let's mm. see. Yeah, people say how handsome I am. We know that, right? Yeah. Anyone say anything about me? Lauren say you realize how to change the camera now. Yeah. <laughs> Let me click it again. You guys can see him on the phone. Why do you want to look at me on the phone? No, I want you to look at you on the phone. It's Inception. Well, I don't care, man. I'm not on a payroll. I right, fine. I'll flick it back. Why, Andre ask, while we're on the Davidoff, will we mention the Zeno Conundrum? We're going to talk about Zeno, Andre. What is Conundrum? We're going to talk about... I want to talk about Zeno. What is Conundrum? Conundrum means, um, like... A disconnect or uh, something that doesn't make sense. Okay. Yeah. I never heard that word. What is the Gunai uh, Yulmas ask? What's the Davidoff Academy? Davidoff Academy is um, it's not something which is available to everyone. It's um, I know that sounds like really pretentious of me. I apologize. I'm not trying to come across. But we we spoke to Roy and we asked him if they you know if we could um, do some research on Davidoff and learn something about the company before we come and do this live stream because we obviously wanted to come a little prepared and you know not just talk about the stuff that we think we know, we wanted to make sure that we're getting correct information as well. So uh, Roy uh, introduced us to the Davidoff Academy. It's effectively a system, it's, it's effectively a big academy of just as like a ton of information that they've got from their history, from how they produce tobacco. Um, it's very detailed in terms of their, their tobacco production and uh, they they discuss their ethos of uh, crop to shop. That's how they say, you know, they produce the crop, they sell it in the stores as well. And that's uh, essentially what the Davidoff Academy is. And it's not available to the public. I think it's only available to Davidoff staff members and people that they want to give access to, essentially. So, yeah, I asked Roy and he was kind enough to give us access to the um, academy. So Roy, if you're watching, which I doubt because you're at this fancy event at the Dakota Hotel in Manchester, I assume. But uh, thank you, Roy, appreciate the access. Yeah, there's a comment from Ludovico says, you know, Zeno family moved to Geneva as refugees. Mm. Um, there was a asking question from Jacob, say when the D4 being released, Andre explaining very well there, so I'm not gonna Comment him as well, the Partagas D4 story. Um, yeah, they're discussing a lot of stuff. Uh, about so no the, questions. The Partagas, yeah. Andre say, the cigar I'm talking about is called KCA, the Prince Khaled of Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah, Andre been very close to get some of those few times, but uh, always been sold out. So um, who controls the Che Guevara brand? What is Che Guevara? That's a question by uh, Jacob. I don't know what's Che Guevara brand, obviously. Is that a cigar brand? I thought it was Cohiba. I never heard of that, but um, yeah. Uh, what's your favorite Davidoff? Cubans. <laughs> That's uh, Lawrence asking. What's your favorite Davidoff? Mine? Well, probably both of us. Uh, what's yours? 
I'm assuming you said David or Cuban. Mm. I would say the Davidoff gold medal one, the gold one. What is called the, uh, the Puro de Oro, I believe. Puro de Oro, yeah, yeah, Puro yeah, yeah. de Oro. If you manage to find uh, one without the band, that's the first release. That's they're, they're nice, but they're not easy to find. I want that was probably my favorite because it's a little bit old. I like the old stuff. There's a there's a store in um, New York. They've got a whole bunch of them available to. Uh, I don't think anymore. The store is closed. No, no, no. Store. I just checked. I checked recently. All right. Is not there I, a Fifth I, Avenue one? No, it's not Fifth Avenue. Um, okay. It's it's in New York State, not New York City. Right. So they've got a whole bunch of them. Yeah, mace. My arm is alright. It feel better, but it's still a lot of pain there. Have you ever tried the David of Tins? No. I've oh, by the way, my favorite David off. Yeah. Um, I've only smoked current line David off. You know, obviously, I haven't smoked any other David off Cubans, and I haven't smoked any other discontinued ones. But my favorite ones, signature number two. Um, there's a 702 version. You know the 702 version, the one that we smoked at the uh, mm -hmm. at the Davidoff store. Yeah. It's good, but this is still better. Signature number two, man, the classic. It's like, you know, crunching up conflicts, man, all these other variations. They're whatever, but this is the one, man. I still think this is better than the 702. The 702 goes too... It, it, it's like... The 702 feels like it's trying too hard. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, it's trying to... It's trying to be... Is trying to be like, oh look at me, I'm so freaking, I'm so flavorful. Well, it's, all these changed, it's a different rapport. It's something new. What they blend, you know, what they yeah, drink. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I mean, it's a they good have, cigar. They need to have that kind of stuff, you know. If you carry it only on the Connecticut, you'll be boring as hell. But they do. That's they why they bring the Oscuro, the Oscurio, the mm. Yamasa, mm. the mm. the late hour. Yeah. Uh, you know, love the late hours. I love the late hour Churchills. One of my favorites. I haven't smoked so many from them, but uh, oh, I when they were twenty seven pounds each. I used to buy a bunch of them, but they're not now. They're like, now they're like fifty quid each, man. I have a Churchill from the release, the pre-release, when they the... organize the events and stuff. Have, I have you? a Churchill? I haven't smoked it yet. That was my first one from them, but I didn't smoke it, so I smoke a robusto after, and I have one more robusto. But yeah, robusto's okay, man. The church, the late hour robusto. Yeah, it's okay. I don't, I'm not feeling it too much. That I again, you know, the Vitola makes a big difference, right? Churchill on that one is, is amazing. So yeah, there's not much of a question so far. So Okay, great. Let's yeah. get back into it. So where were we? 1970s. 1970s. Is it Dr. Schneider? Mm -hmm. That's his name, right? Mm -hmm. And the Ottinger Company. So the Ottinger Company, I don't know much about them, you know. They were just, they, they were a tobacconist in Geneva at the time. I don't know much as well. I know they, they have some, uh, I've seen their humidors made by them. Ottinger humidors, not Davidoff. Mm. Um, but I don't know much what they're doing, basically. But they were a relatively successful tobacconist at the time. Uh, clearly successful, because uh, they purchased Davidoff, the brand, from Zeno. They kept, Zab they kept Zeno on as a, as a brand representative, and obviously Zeno was comfortable, because he made enough money from the, from the deal. And you um, can smoke cigar as much as you want. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, he's comfortable. I mean, this is in the 1970s, so at which point he was relatively but old anyway. I think we need to mention that actually Zeno didn't make any single money from, from the Davidoff. Cuba. Yes. So the, only, the money he makes is from selling cigars yeah, in his yeah. shop. As a retailer. Yeah, as a retailer. Yeah. Not because uh, he have like 5% or 10% of every cigar produced by him. He made name. 0%. I learned yeah. that from you, yeah. He didn't, he didn't make any money from Cuba's as his name on it. He's been just honored to have the the name there, and I think they're still selling the, the Davidoff cigars to him on a retail price, you know, yeah. the, the money, you know, the distribution price. Precisely, yeah. So he didn't get them for free. If everyone thinking he had them for free and selling them in his shop with the margin or whatever, it's no. not really. No, that wasn't the case at all. And I think that's a very important point that you raised there, which is that although the Davidoff brand had his name, it wasn't technically his brand at the time. And... Um, it only became Davidoff's brand when they left Cuba, essentially. But it wasn't his as well. It wasn't his, no. I'm saying so it was Davidoff's. So look at, the, look at the point. So Zeno, one of the most famous recognizable brands, Davidoff, he never owned actually, the, he never made money from his brand. He never, he never actually owned 
the cigars that they produced, even when they went to the Dominican Republic, because at that point, um, Davidoff Cigars was Davidoff of Geneva, owned by Ottinger, the corporation. Um, he must have had some share in the company, though. Potentially. Who knows? Maybe, but uh, still not like, you know, not mm. like every other, almost every other country, company at the moment, you know, yep. like, you know, you've got Placencia, it's owned by family, they own by, everything is owned by family. You've got Drew Estate, Jonathan Drew, you've got uh, Rocky Patel, Rocky Patel, Alec and Blood, you know, it's company which people which create them, they own the company, mm. but Zeno never owned actually his stuff. Well, Zeno made a lot of money though, um, and I guess he was happy with that, right? He still had his brand, he still had his name out there. Uh, the company was bought out from him for 700,000 US dollars, which is equivalent to about 5 million today. So, decent amount of money, even at that time. I don't think he was, he was too displeased about that. Well, enough, enough for a 65 years old guy yeah, to retire. Exactly. So, you, you know, and then, and, but he and, didn't even and retire. Basically, I don't think... Uh, since, uh, Already on that point, when being purchased by Ottinger, I don't think they he ever paid for uh, own cigars after that. I mean, for the personal smokes. Why would he? Yeah, he would probably he? get them for free and carry on smoking as much as he want. Yeah. Why would he? Right. Um, if you're the brand representative of a company, a multi, you know, a, a large ish corporation. At the time, it wasn't as big as what it is now. But if you're a large ish corporation, and you're the brand representative. Yeah, of course, you know, that's one of the perks, right? You get all the cigars that you want. But Zeno did come up with uh, a bunch of brands after that. Like, um, well, Zeno Davidoff, he is the actual founder of that. Obviously, because, you know, his name. So, like, Davidoff Fragrance and all these kinds of things. And a lot of, a lot of the products that most people know of, that a lot of people have heard of Davidoff, the brand name, but they <clears> haven't. <throat> they may not necessarily know that Davidoff started off as a cigar company because they probably just know the aftershave and the perfume and so on and so forth and the other products that um, Davidoff eventually went on to produce. So he did own a lot of those things, but they're not really related to the cigar industry. So mentioning about new stuff, I let's see if I'm not wrong because I, I didn't do my homework and didn't research on that. But I think on the time when Nottinger purchased Davidoff, 70s, uh, they start producing the first uh, cigarillos made uh, with the with the tobacco and hand you know not handmade but i mean pieces of tobacco which is supposed to have a leaves of tobacco and everything like that that was the zeno cigarettes mm. and fun fact uh, the first one was produced in denmark really yeah and i have some of them have you are they good well cigarettes i've never been fan of cigarettes they're small small like small cigarettes uh, not much of a taste they have a lot of pepper but I, I accidentally buy a box of them and I see made in Denmark. And I start researching back in the time why the Zeno cigarettes are made in Denmark. Why were they? Because they, Ottinger was a company which producing that kind of stuff as well. Oh, I see. So they came with the idea to get the tobacco, you know. All, I, I still am not, in, not entirely sure what tobacco is used in them. It can't be Cuban. I don't think it's a Cuban. So I'm pretty sure it's some European tobacco mixed and stuff like that. I don't know. It's information which I don't find any info about it. Mm. But uh, yeah, the Zeno cigarettes came in there. That was the first type of cigarettes from that idea, you know, behind that cigarette, specific uh, type of cigarettes, as I say. And after that, more companies start producing them and, you know, and so on and so on. But they was one of the first companies producing them. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I just had to check to make sure the camera was pointed at you there. <laughs> I'm sorry, man, I'm new to this. You know, normally we have a ha we have a hand on this. <laughs> so yeah, it's uh, that's quite interesting. So cigarillos, did Davidoff invent the cigarillo? No, there was a cigarillos before cigarillos that. Cigarillos were around already. Cigarillos was before that, way before that. But, uh, but distinction. Their their cigarillo was, is different than others. Mm. Uh, I need to no paper, check. just all tobacco, right? Yes. Yeah. So proper so, cigarillo. Yes. No, uh, exactly. No paper on the top. No the swisher stuff. You know the the swisher is you know that. Uh, the texture, paste the paste which yeah, is made yeah, the by the stems is, leaves yeah, yeah, yeah. and everything you know not kind of that kind of it's, the it's that tobacco proper mulch tobacco that leaf yeah, yeah. the proper tobacco leaf cigarettes which basically it's a still uh, pure it's tobacco a, cigar yeah. just on a short fillers and uh, pieces you know yeah. not, not like long fillers but uh, yeah I, I think they 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 invent that one they invented that one uh, maybe not Zeno because uh, you know he don't 
I don't think he'll bother with that. No. But because Ottinger, he was he was more interested in because the I I stuff. know they start early seventies. That Sigurius, they already you know being purchased by Ottinger, so it must be Ottinger the company which pushed that one. Yeah, well they've got um, a much greater profitability on those smaller vitolas because cost next to nothing to produce. More people purchase them. You've got a wider market of people that want to purchase them, and they make a lot of money on them. So it's a good business. Sigurius really. back in the time was very very popular. They still are. A lot of uh, even a lot of women's. Smoke them with you know the small plastic uh, mouse beef, mouth yeah, piece. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they put them in there. I don't, I don't think even people smoke cigarillos as a cigars back in time. It was all for a mouthpiece because all the cigarillos, most of the cigarillos, they have a already pre-cut cup with a slightly thin. Yeah. Enter not the Zinu one. The Zinu have a proper cup on them. Mm. So I'll show you some of them sometime. So even um, now, do you know? Um, Maybe they, they're not necessarily calls. Yeah, they're still cigarillos. Um, they still have a proper cap in them, like the late hour, the new ones. Yeah. They had a proper cap on them. It was quite, and they were nicely packed as well. They were good. I really enjoyed them. It actually does taste like a late hour cigar. It was, it was strange because you've got this like tiny little. I cigarillo think now thing. in the Zino, since, uh, not Zino, Davidov, since they moved to DR, uh, they're supposed to have at least one full leaf into the one long leaf yeah that's that's why they call it medium into filler. The, yeah so it's not a piece as everything you need to have at least one proper long leaf into the cigarillo precisely yeah everything so, else could be mixed sometimes there's a uh, two or three full leaves the to, uh, for example some of the some of the cigarillos are pure long fillers but not guaranteed get not guaranteed that yeah yeah no i i um i noticed that they did confirm that um, they call it medium filler. They don't call it mixed filler. They call it medium filler. The demitis, dem, mm. hmm? is the demitis? Are they demitas? Yeah. Uh, no, no, they they, don't, they didn't call it demitas, as far as I can see, as as far as I can tell. They just called it <clears throat> mixed filler or medium filler cigars, where they will ensure that they have at least uh, some premium cut tobacco in there, but the rest of it is going to be short filler, mixed filler, and you know put together. But there's no. They they also confirmed that they don't make any tobacco products with the mulch stuff where they just make that paste and then dry it out, turn it into paper and then roll it up. They don't use any of that crap, which is good to know. So then, anytime you buy a Davidoff product, you know you're not you know you haven't got any of that crap in there. So that's good. But 1970s onwards from there, that's when a lot of the interesting things happened because Ottinger bought them, bought the company out. Then 1990s is when Zeno did his most famous move, which is burning 100,000 Cuban cigars because of the poorish quality. Official story is he didn't like the quality of the cigars. But Davidoff doesn't really, in the academy, they don't talk about this. They just say he moved over to uh, Dominican Republic. They talk, they don't say anything negative about Cuba or Cuba tobacco or Habanos or anything to that extent. They say nothing negative about it at all. They completely skip over the 100,000 cigars burning in public. They don't discuss that at all. And I get why, because they don't want to like, they don't want to like dunk on any, any other company. They're just talking about what Davidoff did. And that is... The and movie, they don't want to break the myth about the Cuban Davidoff. Because if the reason is the Cuban Davidoffs are very poorly made cigars, why do people still buy them and pay crazy money for them? But they weren't though, right? They weren't. Well, for up to a certain point, I've smoked not much of them. I've smoked Cuban Davidoffs. I can't say are they poorly constructed. Because obviously, see, yeah. they're 50 years old. Mm. You know, they're 40, 50 years old. They already been through a lot of humidors and collections and stuff until they came to my hands. And I don't know how they've been stored. I can't say that cigar is badly constructed because it's have some problems or anything. Just because I don't know how the cigar has been stored. Precisely. No complaint on that. Ray, can I be really unprofessional? No. Wait a minute. I'm going to stick the camera on you. I'm going to quickly grab another cigar. Yeah. Put it on me. I'll talk Because, like, I'm, my cigars... Let me just... You know, I'll put Why this you in the take ashtray. a one-hour cigar for two-hour show? I, d I don't know. I thought it was going to last a little bit longer. But, you know, this cigar is already done. I loved it. But it's already done, so... Do you want know. Camacho? Go get you a cigar. <laughs> Fine, I'll take the Camacho. Go get you a cigar. No, I'll keep you on topic, right? Because I want to talk about Camacho. I'll give you another one. I'm not giving you Camacho. Okay. 
<laughs> Cuban Robusto. So, yeah, guys, you can uh, start flagging questions for after that. You know, probably we're going to talk for another 20, 25 minutes and then we can carry on again questions and everything. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to wait, Usman, before we start the uh, new era with uh, David of the, obviously the DR and uh, Honduras and every other country. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know what to talk about. Myself, I can't see the comments, I can't see anything. It's okay, man, I'm back. I wasn't that long, was I? You know, I thought, let me just smoke something relatively cheap. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I really like these cigars. Uh, let me just show you guys that. Yeah, I really like this cigar, you know? It's one of those cigars... Only, that... only Usman, guys, can smoke uh, Polar and Aga on the Davidoff show. And he asked me, should I smoke a Davidoff? Listen, so man. I was thinking to smoke nice well, Ezra Zion. Well, give me the Zion. Camacho then. No, I was thinking give me to the smoke Camacho. a nice Ezra Zion. But I decided to go for a Davidoff because, you know, he asked give me, me to Give me the Camacho then. No, that's mine. Well, then that's it. I don't have another Davidoff, man. I mean, I've Why? got... Okay, I've got other Davidoffs, but I want to... Why? I've got other Davidoffs, but I want to review them. If you found boy, you need to have more. I have got more, but i got to review them. And I'm letting them rest, you know. They need some cuddles right now. <laughs> Stop judging me, man. I, I gotta, I gotta have a cigar, and because this is like super cheap, I'm not gonna even like bother trying to be all fancy in how I cut them. Yeah, but you're looking, uh, you're using the what? S D Dupont. It's two Dupont in it. Yeah, on the cheap cigar. Don't say cheap or not. Just well, the other cut is too far away, and my cheap cut is upstairs. So, Dominican Republic, Zeno moved to DR. Yeah, so Zeno moved away from Cuba, which makes this very appropriate because we're talking about Cuba. Moved away from Cuba, started um, producing tobacco, or started producing cigars from tobacco made in the Dominican Republic. And the Dominican Republic, this is the information that I got from Davidoff. The reason why they picked or the reason why they really liked the tobacco from the Dominican Republic is because it was really mild tobacco and far more um, palatable for a lot of the a lot of their customers in Europe because a lot of cu European customers they were used to smoking milder Cuban cigars and the Dominican the Dominican Republic had very similarly mild ish tobacco Nicaragua on the other hand was a lot stronger and much uh, far more nutrients in the soil. It's the volcanic ash, and that volcanic ash was producing tobacco much with 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 a much greater kick to it, as opposed to the Dominican tobacco. And that's where they were able to produce their new line of you know white label cigars, their core line of signature cigars, and they were also able to produce a lot of their other cigars as well. But there was something interesting that you and I noticed in um, in the uh, academy, which we were looking at and thinking, hmm. This seems a bit, mm, this seems a bit funny. So I'm gonna let you say this part. Don't look at me, well, man. You, you introduced well, it, the, in the, the, the market share values of all the different regions. Well, I, I don't think it's related specifically for the, back in the time in the 90s. No, no, this is, this is just, more recent information. There was just error, I don't know, if you use it because, uh, purely because it's Davidoff Academy and they push everything about Davidoff, but they mentioned that the biggest market, the biggest producers of the cigars at the moment is DR with 250 million, following by Nicaragua, Cuba, Honduras, which is completely wrong because Nicaragua made at least twice, yeah. almost twice more than the Nicaragua had half the market. In so terms of, well, maybe the, they use the information not at the current state. Possibly. Maybe they used like 10 years ago, which is still not relevant, maybe 15, 20 years ago. I don't know, because even then, Nicaragua was producing a great deal of uh, cigars. And also, but maybe the distinction is, Ministry of Cigars, they, t they recently released uh, an article discussing how much, uh, how many, you know, the sales from each region, right? And uh, Nicaragua have about half the market, including the US. And the US is basically the biggest market in the world at the moment. So half the market... In Nicaragua, a quarter of it is the Dominican Republic, and then a th uh, and then less than that is Cuba, if you include the U.S. And they're talking about sales. The the Academy from Davidoff they were discussing um, <clears throat> they were discussing production. So I don't know. Do you? I have a theory 
Go on. I never discussed that with people from Davidoff. Uh, do you think one of the reasons as well to move to DR is the American market? Because that was before the cigar boom. Course. Cigar boom came like three or four years later. Well, I mean, look, consider the, consider and, the uh, uh, embargo. The embargo happened David, in the 60s. Davidoff already have, uh, uh, I think, selling a lot of cigarettes in the States. You know, accessories and stuff. They already start picking up as a bigger company. And they don't want to miss the American market. They prefer to... Why would you want to miss the biggest ma the biggest market in the world? As I never seen as that on official statement somewhere. Say but that. I, I few times I think about it because that was just one of, of the topics it which was a one lot of the reasons. people discussing, you know, why they moved. And I was thinking, is it not as well one of the points? Obviously, you know, you want to get that three hundred million mm -hmm. cigars over there. Obviously, you're not going to sell all, only your cigars there, but you can get a chunk of that market Precisely. and selling way more because already Ottinger was a big company yeah maybe not a huge corporation but it was on the state to go in there yeah and they just want to be more and more of course and i think that's probably one of the biggest factors because you have to remember zeno wasn't at the helm at this stage right zeno was not the one making the decisions he wasn't saying okay i want this i want this to happen i want this to happen he was effectively a cigar rep but a very respectable cigar rep who did a lot for the industry even in that time when he when the company was bought out by ottinger so this is not to try and say that he had no influence. Of course he had some influence, but the company was not his. So it wasn't like Zeno was saying, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna stop production in Cuba. We're gonna move over to um, uh, the Dominican Republic. More than likely, it was a business decision. They looked at the market. The embargo had been going on. It's been 20 years embargo 30. in. No, 1990s, 20 yeah, at that 30. point. 1968, right? 1962. Oh, so yeah, 30 years. 1961, 62. Kennedy made the embargo. Kennedy he died in 63. He did, he did, he did. Kennedy died, mm. yeah. The mm. Kennedy didn't manage to smoke even a quarter of the cigars he buy <laughs> before the embargo, so. So yeah, the company probably realized, wait a minute, we've got a whole industry here where we can't sell any of our products to or any of our, you know, uh, any of our own branded products, which is bad for business. So... What do we do? Well, if we stop producing Cuba, uh, cigars in Cuba and we move everything over to the, Dominic the Dominican Republic or Nicaragua or Honduras, we can sell to the biggest cigar consuming market in the world. More than likely, that was the reason. The quality control thing, uh, um, it's a bit shaky. It's a bit shaky. That's a bit of a shaky one because what, you know, Zeno turned around and said, oh, I don't like the quality of this. So the company, the whole company just shifted on his word. I doubt it. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a big topic to talk about. As I say, it's uh, also Cuba producing a certain amount of cigars back in the time, and if they even want to grow, maybe they know they can't produce more than what they're already producing. No. Instead of as you say, shifting into the another country, start crazy heavy at the at the beginning. With they have the, they have full control. Yeah. They 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 literally have full control because they 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 as they advertise from crop to shop, they have full control from the actual seed. To the final product when they sell it in their retail store they had and none of that control when they were in cuba as every strategic plan they might have a plans to grow and bring more and more blends as, as what it's happened actually mm. you know all the different blends and play with the blends and bring more because in cuba you have the you have the chateau line you have the standard line that's it that's it that's it that was and it yeah maybe if you ask for another line it, it wasn't be easy because already cuba have enough on their back yeah. just you know their lines and they stop you know back in the time they stop some of the lines, they start new lines, you know, they start brands like mm. Rubaina, that kind of stuff, you know, they have already have them plans for Rubaina, you know, I think 1994, yeah. Rubaina starts, so that's literally pretty much after, after Zim left. Precisely. So you gotta, I mean, the, the, the reason why the quality argument doesn't make that much sense to me is because when you look at cigars from Cuba around that time, the cigars were great. Even when you smoke, when you smoke cigars from 19... I don't, I don't like that comparison because... I'm not going to... Okay. They're this, good, but you smoke them now. That's, that's a fair point. 40 years later. That's a fair point. However, we're talking about quality in terms of construction. Age doesn't really affect construction that much. I mean, it does to some extent. Yes, because the cigar... You're not going to find plug cigars mm -hmm. that old. Because the leaves, with that time, they get thinner and thinner. Even if it's perfect store, you know. Yeah, gonna, no, that's I've seen true. cigars that's which true. are 48 true. ring gauge producing. Yeah. I measured them with my ring gauge and it's there 46. 
just because they've been 40 years already in no, there, that's a not a bone dry cigar. That's a good so, I mean, point. Yeah. with the time, the tobacco leaves just getting a little bit thinner and, you know. Yeah, because over, over time, the, yeah. the actual density I, reduces. I smoke fairly, well, no, not crazy amount, but I would no, say smoke, does make a smoke a decent amount of vintage Cuban cigars. I'm talking from the 80s, 70s, 60s, not much of the 60s, but 70s, 80s, 90s. Quality has always been good for me. Mm. I never have a plugged one. Taste-wise, well, you not compare the taste. It's a 40 years old cigar. It can be completely yeah, yeah, gone a yeah, yeah. long time ago. So we're not talking about, but I don't smoke a, a cigar which is uneven. I don't smoke a cigar which the, it's plugged or need to light in every two minutes or something like that. So I can't remember smoking that kind of mm. cigars from that time. But I, I still, I still want to, I still think it's, I still think it's a relevant point to make, and that is that Cuban cigars were still very popular even at that time. It's a, it's a more, maybe it's more acceptable from the public if you say the quality control instead of we're greedy and we want to go on a bigger market. But it's not greedy. It's just good business. Okay, it's depends on the point. It's not greed. It's just a smarter decision because they had no control over their own branded products in Cuba. But as soon as they move to the Dominican Republic, they've got full control. They've got access to the actual it's, it's, seed. It will be dilemma for forever. You know that yeah. will be a question which will not find. I an think answer. that's probably a more reasonable reason to move over than to say, "Oh, we didn't like the quality," because it's like, well, come on. You know, the quality was actually still really good. It's not like people were, you know, it's not like people were looking at the uh, cigars at the time like, "Oh no, they're terrible. We don't like Cuban cigars anymore. They're all really crappy." Didn't happen. Cuban Cuba was still producing high quality products. More than likely, it was because Davidoff just wanted to have better control. They were a growing company. They were they were growing a lot faster than what Cuba was allowing them to do. Just just an example. I just mm. came in on my mind. Late eighties, eighties and late eighties, early nineties. That's the best time for uh, Cuba. Best lanceros are from that age. Precisely. Davidoff produced two Lanceros back in the time, in that time. Yeah. So that Lanceros I consider was a, one of the best Cuban cigars ever made. Precisely. So this idea that it was quality control may have played a minor part in it because of the quality control that they wanted to implement. Because they wanted to implement uh, almost like a Ford level conveyor belt type quality control, right? You know, make sure they're checking at every single level. So maybe they had, they had some minor um issue there but to say that oh we didn't like the quality of it and that's why we moved i think that's bullshit i think the uh, the main reason is they wanted better control and since then they've gone from strength from strength to strength so brilliant decision on davidoff's part but i do call bullshit on the uh, quality control thing i think it was as you say they wanted to move over to the dominican republic and they wanted access to the biggest market on the planet the United States. Why wouldn't you? Of course you do. And now the company's worth what? 1.3 billion? It's the biggest company in the cigar industry. It might not be the biggest cigar producing company in the world, but as an entity in the cigar industry, it is the biggest company. And I think the fact that they moved over to the Dominican Republic must have helped a massive amount. Because they own everything now, right? They hire the people that as far as I know, they, they own everything. Uh, no, I'm not entirely sure how is uh, how they what they own in the Kellner fa factory and farm, because you know Kellners are not in the business now. Mm. Are they Davidoff who moved the production, or they they own the factory actually down there? I thought they, they owned it. It's not I clear, though, is it? I don't know. It's not as, clear, though. Is as it? we can, you know, we can we can skip, speculate. We can, uh, you know, we can uh, skip uh, the la the next 20 30 years because basically they grow 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 in uh, dr they open a factory in uh, honduras mm. i think the next uh, moment uh when they do something more significantly was when they purchased camacho so the cigars yeah. which we're talking about but camacho back in the time was on, it was owned by eroa family yeah that was a honduran cigars and davidoff just maybe wants to expand into different types <coughs> of tobacco easiest way for them and not just buy tobacco from them Yep. We just, just buy, buy the, the whole com yeah. company. This is something that Davidoff has done. So rumors say they act, they buy the Camacho, but they didn't buy the receipts for the cigars, the blends. That's what rumors say. Because oh, the recipes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because 
Kam- Sorry, I didn't mean Camacho. to correct you. I just, yeah, you know. that's fine. Camacho, it's, uh, we know what the Camacho is now, what the cigars are. They're not compatible even to the old Camacho size. We don't like Camachos. And the, comp- the family which own the old Camachos, Eroa, they produce Aladino cigars, which many people say that's an old Camachos, yeah. just with different name. Same blends, different name. They, which ones? Course, which ones? Uh, Aladino. Aladino. Are they current? Uh, yeah, they make Aladino. They start producing new and new lines. Yeah. But uh, the first Aladinos on the market, that was old Camachos, the core line. Are they good? They're good. They're very good. They're very good. Okay. Yes. But I'll this bring is the, some. This is the I'll thing, give right? you some to smoke. They're <clears throat> amazing cigars. This is the thing that, you know, you and I discussed earlier. And, you know, this is not to try and, like I said, we're not just being fanboys of Davidoff. As much as I'm a big fan of Davidoff as a company of what they've, what they've done and what they've achieved in the industry and how much they've con- essentially contributed to the industry, right? They've done a lot for the, uh, to the industry. It, we're not going to just sit and like, you know, jump up and down about everything because there are certain things that we dislike. For example, Camacho. No, I yeah, I, yeah. I, I've smoked most of the Camachos, not everything. I've, I've smoked, I've smoked the reds and the yellows. I still haven't find a decent Camacho, which for me worth smoking it again. Uh, I, I am up to smoke some of the Liberties. I know the Liberty is one of the most expensive line in the Camacho. They're most expensive than most of the Davidos even. Mm. Uh, Liberties, I know Camacho have some uh, distillery editions, some small batch productions. I have some of those. I haven't smoked all of them, of course. Have but you the smoked ones, any of them? Not of those very rare ones. Okay. So I'm up to smoke So you don't know if, they, if they're good or not just yet? N- not yet, yeah. Okay. But the ones I smoke, uh, didn't enjoy any to the decision to... I'll smoke them often and anything. Same like. here, same here. I, it's I mean, just, you know, I have them, try them. They're not, they're yeah. not my cigars. Same here. I mean, I again, always joke that Camacho are leftovers from Davidoff. That's what I'm always saying. It's because I've heard you say that. Yeah, yes, yeah. it's a, it's a not bad quality control cigar, not bad quality constructed cigar, but the taste is just awful all the time. I know, I know a lot of people like them. Maybe because they're a little bit budget, they're way but they're, that, that's their budget line. They yeah. have they own five, six major brands. Well, Zeno's their budget line uh, now. Well, Zeno it's a Zeno is a controversy for me because Zeno. We're going to talk about wait wait. Uh, we'll, let's stick to Camacho now because I do want to talk about Zeno. We'll get to that. I promise. Yeah, we don't have so much time to do all them, but yeah, mm. let's see a little bit. Uh, but we're going to talk about Zeno. We've got enough time to talk about um, Zeno. Uh, Camacho is yeah. Camacho is a it's another brand they own. I was just mention some of the others. You know, I was just point to mention what they own. What I know they own. Mm. Uh, Avo, yeah. Avo Vesian, Camacho, uh, Griffin, and uh, Zino. But Zino, it's mm, Zino is different. You know, we'll back go back on Zino. Mm. Uh, if but Camacho, you, going on to Camacho, I mean, I have nothing else to say for Camacho. <coughs> it's I have I have something to say. Go ahead. Um, yeah, I, I have a very similar experience with Camacho. I mean, I, I, I looked at it and I thought, oh, it's owned by Davidoff, so construction and everything must you know must be relatively good. And <coughs> I smoked. I did give it a chance. They're not as bad as Gurkha. <laughs> have you smoked Cusano? I think I have. Cusano are better than Camacho. I think I have. I think I have. They're made by Davidoff. But They're I think... one euro, two euro cigars. The metal tubes, no bands. Metal tubes, always punch cut on the top. They're long okay, no, Vitolas. They're like either. Churchill Vitolas. Nice silky wrapper. Nice looking cigar, trust me. Mm. And they're, in my opinion, I prefer to smoke Cusano than most of the Camachos. Okay, I don't think I've smoked it then. It sounds like a very <coughs> familiar brand, but I don't think I've... It's uh, in Europe, in every airport, as I say, they are one, two euro a piece. Okay. You can buy like 10 for 10 euro or something like that. Probably. But Camacho, I, I just never got on with it. Uh, I, again, not to try and say that they, they, they're, they're terrible cigars, because I'm, I'm sure there are loads of people that enjoy them. But I just never got on with them. And I'd rather just spend my money and buy something like a Signature 2, which is, in the UK, is less expensive Smoke than... Smoke less, smoke quality. Precisely precisely and i think that the signature two cigars or the signature line from davidoff they tend not to be as expensive as some of the camachos anyway in the uk in the uk there's not much of a camachos no as i say the most the expensive camachos they are the i think the most the expensive aged? one is the no the no. liberty line <clears throat> they came in, a in the uk no no in the, in the states yeah yeah and i'm talking about uk in the uk they aged. have like three or four yeah they've got the barrel aged ones triple what was the triple maduro or something something like that. i don't know but it was like a barrel age had like some fancy <coughs> oh these look good let me try these right and i smoked it i smoked i bought like a bunch of them because you know you don't just buy one right you buy a couple of, or two or three of them just to be able to try it properly and make sure that you get a good understanding of it and i was like what is this like i, I just hated it it wasn't like it was bad. It was just not enjoyable. 
it was just eh, whatever and I didn't enjoy it at all um, Avo I hated their smallish you know the uh, the puritos or whatever I smoked a couple of them first just to kind of get in just to see what they were about they were horrible like genuine horrible but then I smoked some of the other Avos and I was like wait a minute these bigger ones you know the the proper cigars they were actually really good I'm an Avo fanboy are I you? prefer any Avo oh, than you do? any Davido. Oh, okay. Right. I've smoked Avo almost was... any Avo in the past. All the, they produce every year limited edition mm. for the Avo birthday. Mm. They produce all the, the boxes are way better than Davido. They have a box in the form of Royale, you know, Piano Royale, you know, that kind of stuff. They have a box in the shape of a violin. All the, the brand is, you know, I, I like all the Avos. I have my oldest Avos are from 90s. No, no, we're talking about Davido own Davo. Yeah. Are they, were they still owned by Davido? I think back in the time they owned by Davidoff as well. Okay. They, I don't know when they purchased the Avo. But the Avo ones, the recent the, the recent da Avos that I smoked, the proper cigars, they were really good. I really enjoyed them. And I was like, okay, if I'm going to smoke some cigars which are owned by Davidoff that are not Davidoff, it's going to be Avo because the Camacho ones, whew. Yeah, actually, I, didn't, I don't know when they bought Avo. Maybe Andre or someone else will Google it and find out when they actually bought Avo. But it must be after, must be before 2000 because the 2000 is when they start doing the anniversary edition. The first one was 2001 in a Churchill red band, amazing cigar. I've smoked one literally a few weeks ago. It's Camacho? One of the, no, Avo. Avo. I'm not talking about Camacho anymore. That's okay, good, enough good, talking good. for Camacho. Good, good, good. Avo is my one of my. You know, I I love almost any Avo. I smoke most of them. Uh, some of the recent ones was on good one. You know, a few of the recent symmetry wasn't so bad. You know, mm. it was a, no, not perfect, but a little bit older. Do you, know, older. Do you know which one was really good? In my mind, anyway. Um, this was the, uh, the Avo Synchro. I think it was an auction selection or something like that. That was actually really good. I don't, I don't know, know if you tried best, that. Best Avo. It wasn't the best Avo. I think it was a really good one. called Trompetta. It's a limited edition as well, mm. five or six years ago. The cigar have a shape of a trumpet <laughs> and have a dots on the front with different color like you know literally really? buttons yeah it's um, oh that's pretty cool amazing cigar that's pretty cool uh yeah i smoked my last one but i was very close to get a box of them and i just missed it not long ago and I'm so sorry that i didn't get that box it was literally uh i miss it just you know can i ask a question why is the Zeno brand budget line of cigars in davidoff because you know uh, as i say they start as a cigarillos I don't think no, they, they hit me out. I, I don't think they make Zeno cigars until probably somewhere in 2000. Okay, but hear me out. Zeno in for many people is the guy is the, is the person is the face of Davidoff, right? He's the person who's essentially made the cigar industry what it is for Davidoff. Why the hell is the Zeno brand the budget line? Because surely, it starts as a budget. No, but surely it should be like the you know creme de la that, creme that company is nothing else with Zeno. Zeno passed away a long time ago yeah i know but if you're going to use that name surely make it into something which is like these are our premium line mm. these are our high-end no stuff. Zeno never been an expensive brand even before with the red band i don't know if you've seen some of the, with the red bands you know they're using funny burgundy same same as my cut color bands Zeno. they've never been that good yeah, i smoked why? some why I, couldn't they? Why I, couldn't they use that brand name to produce their top end level of cigars instead of producing their budget? Maybe line? it's a marketing. Maybe because the name is associated with the cheap uh, cigarillos, because that's how they start with the cheap cigarillos. But that's not what Davidoff represents. I mean, that's that's not what Zeno was about. I have no idea. Do you know what I mean? The whole the whole point of Zeno was these are the best quality cigars. Smoke less, but smoke the best. Yeah, but it's, you know, it's just a line of cigars. I don't I know, think it's a separate brand. They're, it's not. I'm not talking because I'm, the separate brands. I'm not talking the, about. It's not a separate brand. I'm talking about the branding. If you're going to use the name, well, they decide that. It's a marketing. <clears throat> it is, but if you're going to use the why name, why the most Zino? expensive one is called Oro Blanco? Yeah. Why not Zino something? They decide Oro Blanco. That's it. Royal Royal release. But that's what I'm saying. Surely it would have made a little bit of sense to use that Zeno name it must be for something better than just like a yellow bright brand and, and, and you know, 
entry level. That with the yellow brown brown uh, yellow brown. I like the, the colors. Moment. I'm not gonna lie. It's uh, marketing for the young people mm. because you know colorful cigars, shiny looking stuff. They attract young young people, young smokers. Vitola is not big. It's not something crazy strange Vitola. You know, no yeah, one yeah. sells or anything like that. Yeah, it's just something for the young generation. I don't know, but Zino, I, I count Zino as a line. I don't separate them as a brand, as I say. No, I'm not. The sa- brands are Camacho, Avo, to- and Griffin. That's it. But that- Zino is a separate brand, though. It's not Davidoff, is it? It's not. It's not called Davidoff cigars. It's called Zino cigars. Yeah, but it's a line. Yeah, but so mm, it's in a. S- they never been owned by anyone else. Yeah, true. That's how brands work, right? You come up with a new brand of a of a new product. Or other brands being owned by someone. You know, Avo being owned by Avo. Okay, I see you know, I see the, what distinction you're the, making. Yeah. yeah, the Camacho obviously, the yeah, yeah, Griffin yeah. from the I don't know what was who was owner of the Griffin, but I think some European family. Um, yeah. I don't know. I just find it a little Let's see how are the questions. A little we can odd. Talk a little bit. Well you, well, you just want me to talk for a bit, huh? Yeah. Well, okay, well, I just find it a little odd that the Zeno brand isn't the um, high-end stuff. Because if you're going to... It's, you know, Zeno Davidoff. That's just my thing, anyway. But yeah, I'm just talking to a void right now, so I'm just going to talk to you guys. How are you guys doing? You know, so far. What are the questions like? Is Zeno your favorite New World brand? Mine? No. Us, no name specialized. Not really, no. Not mine as well. No. Like I prefer the uh, the Davidoff cigar. Than... Uh, Andre asked about the uh, separate, you know, Avo, Zino, Griffins, Camacho, Cusano. Have they strayed away from the brand's core values? Um, I don't know. Yeah, they're different. They're different idea Cost, of that yeah, brand. Yeah. Avo is more again brand for relating someone else's memory. You know, Avo cigars. They're all related to the musician, to that kind of stuff, and you know, Zino is. My idea of the Zeno was, I think, is because slightly to the new generation, they're prototype to them. Yeah. Griffins, there's so small production of the Griffins. I smoke only very few Griffins. Cosano is their low budget lines. They are pretty much cheapest stuff they produce. Camacho is another stuff they produce mostly from Honduran factory. Mm. Maybe they want to keep the Honduran tobacco as a name of a Camacho, mostly. Maybe. Can it's I, a speculation. Can I just change the subject a little bit for a minute? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. The quality control. <clears throat> Put your phone out for a second. I want to talk to you about something. <coughs> Ray, mm. I want to talk to you about something. I'm listening to you. Put your phone down, man. I can't no. talk to you when you got your no. phone. <laughs> All right. Davidoff quality control. Davidoff keeps going on about how their quality control is the best. I don't know if that's true. They say that the, the, I've been on the call with uh, Klaus Kellner. You say they have like seven stage of quality control, which no one else claimed to have that in the factory. You know, seven different pairs of hands actually touch every cigar before. Yeah. But I'll explain what that. I mean. I'll explain what I mean. So with with Cuban cigars, a lot of people say that there's a higher risk with Cuban cigars to have a plugged cigar, right? Because the majority of Cuban cigars are heavy filled and they're packed quite heavy. Would you agree? Yeah. 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 So um, they lean they lean more towards one uh, side of the spectrum. Davidoff, on the other hand, lean far too hard on the other side of that spectrum. Because what you want is you want to have a good firm draw. Like the Fuentes that I've been smoking, right? They've all got a good firm draw. That's have a nice draw. That one does. That signature too, good firm draw. That's what I like. I don't have a problem with the draw. You always have a problem with the draw. On no, that, no, no. I never have a problem with the draw. <clears throat> the there. Davidoff cigar that I just smoked, brilliant draw. Good firm draw, not loose. But what I find is there's a higher risk of having an extremely loose draw with Davidoff cigars than I do with any other cigars. Maybe Padron, but Davidoff cigars, I have that risk where you can pick up a cigar and you take a draw and it just kind of goes straight through. There's no resistance and it burns too hot. So the quality control argument, the way I see it is there's a spectrum and there's a balance in between. You want to kind of get towards the midsection, which is like relatively firmish draw. 
there's some resistance but it's not but it's a comfortable degree of resistance cubans might lean a little bit on this side where it's kind of edging towards that firmer draw and sometimes there's a risk of having a plug cigar so you kind of get frustrated about that because you can't take a draw but davidoff lean on this side of that spectrum which is kind of like well most of the time you'll get a decent draw which is like a good firm draw but then sometimes you'll get cigars which are like too far on this side which is too loose of a draw and then you take a draw and it's like what the hell man there's nothing in here it's just i'm just i'm just smoking a straw right now so the quality control fine they might have loads of stages in there but the construction isn't perfect it's not like davidoff have some magical level of construction well, where with, as, I, as i said that with that's your opinion because i never have a loose davidoff i've had a bunch of them okay i've had a bunch of them i never i've had oh my god i had that royal release the royal release robusto that was loose as hell that's a 80 85 pound cigar in the uk i don't know how much it is in in europe but they're not exactly cheaper they're not that much cheaper in Europe. They're not that much cheaper in the US because Davidoff have like a relatively consistent price point across the world, right? That's what I found. So the Royal Release is their premium, you know, like their creme de la creme level of cigar. That had some loose freaking draw, man. And then a bunch of signature cigars that I've smoked as well. Uh, they've had some crappy... Is someone talking shit about me? Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's fine, man. But I've had a whole bunch of them. So... The way I see is, I've got some risk of getting a plug cigar from Cuban, and I've got some risk of yeah, getting a super exactly. loose. Exactly, I've got a comment for you here. Go on. Exactly on that point you mentioned. Lauren say, Usman is kind of guy do a stream called Why New Worlds Are Amazing and Smoke a Cuban. <laughs> you say it, guys, not me. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I was I underestimated. Uh, that cigar normally it takes me a little bit longer to smoke the um too much signature. is more consistent than my beloved olivia in flavor profile they're both not my type so i won't comment there well read out the questions man don't just keep them to yourself no i just read that one as i say i'm just reading you know People just suggesting to try someone to try different cigars, mm. you know, giving examples with different stuff for who smoking Camachos and stuff. Um, any, any, Fernando ask any hidden gems shops online that's strictly US. Strictly US? Yeah. That's all you, man. He only shops uh, cigars daily at the moment and would like to expand the options if possible. If you want shopping cigars daily, you're missing out because there's loads of other options as well. Yeah, I don't know. If you want to shop from the States, man, any, any, any relatively big village in the States have a tobacco shop. Yeah. So Google it and start searching on Facebook. It's, it's so many. I literally spoke with the shop owners every couple of days with different shop owners if I try to, for to search a specific cigar. And I'm surprised how many small shops are there. Mm. There are, loads, there are loads of options available. That's the good thing about the US. You know, the US has so many options available, so many stores available that you could, um, you kind of get lost in it. So yeah, Andre gave him an example with the small, small batch cigars. They're great guys and have a crazy rare stuff in there. So it's a good shout down. Mm. Any other comments, suggestions or anything like that? How about, Cigaropi asks, how about old Camachos before David of bought the company? Yeah, I love them. I smoke three. All of them but was a completely different cigars. Mm. So nice, but as I said, probably because they're already old, you won't find the power or anything because some of the Honduran cigars have a lot of power. You won't find them in the old Camachos. So if you want nice, tasty, mild cigar, go for it. If you find any, of course. Is that difficult to find? Yes, man. It's, they're collectible as well. Interesting. So everything cold is not easy to find. So... No Rolex, David no sex, commenting, Camacho is strong, harsh strong for me. I don't know. Davidoff bought Avo in 1995 for 10 million. The brand was started in 83 together with Henry Kellner before Davidoff joined with Kellner. Ah, so Kellner was the dude behind Avo. That's why Avo cigars are actually really good. Yeah, I know that, but I didn't know when they bought them actually, you know. I see, yeah, yeah. So 1995. Hmm. Andre, favorite David of his anniversary number two. Anniversary number two. Yeah. 
They're Stop. discussing the UK prices. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Ludovico said to go in Geneva. Cigars are there, yeah, we know they're cheap there, but... Uh, um, there are a couple of stores in Geneva which I which I really liked. Uh, Rain Cigars, Rain Cigars. I don't owned know. Owned by that. Sebastian. Cavalier. Cavalier. Yeah, but, the guy yeah. who owns Cavalier, he's got a store. Okay. Called Ryan Cigars. So that's his store. And that store was really nice. They've got a really nice um, lounge upstairs as well. And he and his wife are amazing. Their, their hospitality, customer service, incredible. Their store is beautiful. They're a little bit pricier than some of the other stores in in um, Switzerland, but is it Sigaropi ask? Is it through Davidoff and Kellner family separating? Well, uh, Henke Kellner, the guy who blend Davidoff most of his life, uh, he stopped blending a year ago. I think he just get on a back plan. You know, didn't didn't be involved in anything with the company. Mm. Uh, his uh, son, Klaus Kellner. Yeah. He's been a, he's not been blender. He's been a sales director, I think, for the States. Yeah. He left the company as well a couple of months ago. Did he? Yes. What? That's how the Kellner family stopped absolutely being involved in Davidoff. Wow. And Eladio Diaz, the guy who blend the most interesting there, uh, Davidoffs, including the Oro Blanco and the Golden mm. Ones. And he also, I think, announced he will leave the Davidoff by the end of the year. So literally no but one from the old generation will be there. This is more about them getting them retiring, though, right? Well, Henke, yes, he retired. He's a very old gentleman. Yeah, Eladio he's, as well. He's relatively. He's getting I on think a bit. He's, still, but he's, he's getting on a bit. Let's say that he started with Henke many, many years ago, and Henke is not there, so he he probably don't want to do by itself all the stuff. Possibly, yeah. But Davidoff as a company, they you know they're huge. They'll they'll find uh, suitable, talented people to be able to fill those. Maybe not fill those shoes, but they'll be able to find suitable people to kind of um, continue their brand legacy and so on and so forth. So I don't think I don't think Davidoff are going to be in any any trouble with that by any means. No, they already have a uh, people which probably pick and blend and roll in. And... Precisely, precisely, yeah. So yeah, I think Davidoff as a company, they're going to be fine in that regard. Um, yeah, there's no problems with that at all. Lauren's asking, do you? Do you prefer your cigars to look more light brown or dark brown? Either, both, all. Uh, you don't like dark browns, man, don't lie. What are you on about? Yeah. I smoke Maduros regularly. Andre wants to talk about the limited release from Davidoff. Limited releases. Which limited releases? All of them. All of them. Well, we don't <laughs> have much for all of them, but mm. limited releases. We mentioned it in the previous show probably a little bit that they have so many limited releases. A lot more than way more than almost any brand I know. Yeah, they kind of go overboard with it, I think. And that's that's what the some of the people I know don't like. You know, <coughs> literally, David <coughs> bring with a new edition every month. Mm. Ch- Chef's edition, Zodiac editions, City editions, um, all kind of every shop in the state. Almost every big shop in the state, the state have a own limited edition. Mm. They have a you know whatever event edition, whatever something. It's so many. I'm pretty sure like ninety percent of them are not new blends. They just rebrand something and put it on the market and do you think because they've got like massive bales and bales of tobacco available in their warehouses so do you think they just kind of walk through find something which is relatively old and think oh this is really good let's try this most of the companies get rid of the old tobacco like limited editions but that's the, that's thing the about, way to get rid of something which you can't sell you don't want to sell or anything like that but that's it's not but the thing about old tobacco is that it's not it's not old is it it's like it's it's more aged because it's been through a, a longer aging process nobody know what do you think? Because I find that's that's probably more of the case, right? So we call it old, but it's well, not old. It's just been through a, the, a longer aging process. The price tag and the idea behind the Oro Blanco is exactly that. Because the Oro Blanco, if I'm not mistaken, every like leaf 10 of years that or is something? 12 years old. 12 years, sorry, yeah. Been aged 12 years old before you know the rolling process. So that's a lot of time. But 12 years and the price tag is like $500 for a cigar. Mm. I don't know. It doesn't sound right for me. Just a, too much hassle on that cigar, maybe. I haven't smoked one. I can't say if it's that good for $500, but... But we saw, some in the, um, we saw some in the Davidoff London store. I think that is probably the most expensive cigar which has been produced back in the time when they released them. Yeah. 
And you know, I, I know the Gurkha have one for crazy two thousand pounds, but yeah. I think the Gurkha one, you you can't just bowl it like that. You need to. You can buy no. You can buy the thousand the thousand dollar cigar. How uh, new is that cigar? Is it after the Oro Blanco? I think they're after the Oro Blanco. Yeah, but you can buy the thousand pound, the one that comes in a glass tube with the green wax on it. I yeah. think um, Andre will be able to tell us the name of it. King King something. What is Queen it? Queen something. Yeah, yeah, I know. Andre, the, do you know which one? Louis, Louis thirteen brandy infused. Yeah. But that's infused with the expensive brandy. Yeah. The Davidoff is not infused with anything, no. just a 12 years old tobacco. Yeah. And then is... Cigar Obsession, uh, he, he, he reviewed it and he was like, <laughs> 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 he smoked a thousand pound gurk and he's like, yeah, whatever, man. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, embarrassing. Yeah, we are, we are nearly on the end. It was a, mm. it was a, yeah, great show, great talk. Um, uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I hope the people enjoy it as well. Um, it's been an interesting topic. Uh, just before we uh, Usman start wrapping things up and everything, I just want to again have a big shout out to our guy in Australia, Kevin. Yes. With his happy birthday. Yes. I don't know if he's watching happy us. Birthday, I man. hope he's watching us. He's recording it. If not, he, it will be in our YouTube channel. He will watch it as many times as he wants and mm. he can celebrate every birthday what he have with us. Um, I'm hoping he will join in our... We have a Facebook group. If you don't know, we already have a Facebook group, which... I'm very happy with the quality stuff in there. You can ask any questions. You can post your pictures. Yeah, guys, suggestions. join the group. Just be join more social in the Facebook group. It's called Cigar Round. It's the same name as the channel. Uh, I I think we have already some very nice discussions there. Usman promised me to add some of the best videos we film and do in the channel in the group as well. Yeah. People can watch them there. We're going to try and do um, more. Uh, you know, we, we can, we, we're trying to get the rooms feature working on the uh, on the yes, on the on the Facebook on page but that's been a little temperamental so what we might do is we might just have to have a, a link to Skype or Zoom or something but we're only going to be um putting that in the Facebook group so if you want to join us for them then you know make sure you're part of the group and then you can hopefully join us for some virtual herfs and talk to us and talk to whoever's in the group as well about cigars and well, so the, and so forth. Well the idea we have in the beginning is uh to make that uh, virtual meeting with the people every mm. week, which we don't film. Precisely. So yeah. every week we don't film, we're on a virtual meeting. And of course, on the next week we will film it. That's the idea. But we still, with there's a book in Facebook, we already contact them and uh, they working on it to allow us to open the room. So hopefully soon that will happen. And one more thing from me, um, as you know, in some of the shows, I mentioned that I'm uh, the UK ambassador of Lightem of Gold. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting, very nice app by made by uh, Lightem of Family. Uh, it's a massively, website. It's a web uh, web address at the moment. It's not app app for downloading. It's been learned as a better version this morning. So everyone who already been subscribed for that, it will have an email with login details and everything. If you're not subscribed, if you still have any problems, just ping me a message and I will manage to send you a link and uh, passwords to login. I haven't and you can my start using details. it. Can you send me the link? Because I have yeah. I did sign up. I yeah. know I signed up. Yeah. Because I did it when you told me to do it. So yeah, the better version is live. Start this morning. Not all the features are open yet. We just want to see how the things will pick up and everything. So that is uh yeah, that's everything probably from me tonight. Yeah, I guess um well, do your sign off then. Smoke your cigars, guys. If not, you know, Widow Collector will smoke them. Yeah. <laughs> and if you want to know more about the Widow Collector, there's a podcast called The Lounge Experience in in uh, Apple or all the podcasts, Spotify, whatever. The episode with me will be released this week or next week. In Put Thursday. a link in the group. I will when I have the official. Okay, once it's done. Once yeah. it's done, yeah. yeah. So yeah, again, that's going to be going in the group as well. So, you know, join the group because uh, it's a great way for us to engage with you guys, talk to you all. And it's just a, a bit easier because with the live stream, as much as we want to engage with you and we want to talk to you about the comments and everything, it's not as easy because we want to talk about the subject and we want to kind of keep you on track. And although we have like moments where we can talk to you and uh, address the comments and, and so on, it's not going to be as effective as if you, let's say, post something in the group and you can talk to us directly about things. And it's, it's just a little bit easier. So, yeah, please do join the group. Andre's in the group as well. So... You know, he's. Uh, we should probably make Andre one of the experts in the group because he freaking knows a lot. <laughs> we don't. We don't make anyone an expert. Everyone is expert there. We don't. We're not judged by anything. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, we could just keep it. You know, democratic in that regard. But yeah, you know, uh, the one thing I would say is, you know, Andre's in the group and uh, he's uh, 
he's a, a, a freaking fountain of uh, knowledge there so highly recommend you throw as many questions as you can at him and obviously raise there as well and raise constantly um, answering a lot of the questions there too so yeah join the group talk to us there and thank you again for joining us for this live stream really appreciate it um, sorry for the uh, hiccup initially but hey you know what's a cigar rants live stream if it's not late <laughs> just saying man keep it on brand keep it on brand I s you know we, you know when um, I, I hit the live button I'll just try to get things I, I saw I saw a couple of comments like, yeah, these guys are going to be late to their own funeral. <laughs> Probably Usman, not me, guys. I'm just sitting in my chair since 7 o'clock and I'm ready to bang. You do nothing to set up, though. I mean, I'm not complaining. Did I ask you? <laughs> Did I ask you? Listen, Ray asks in the, like the most nonchalant way possible. Like, is there anything I can do to help? Knowing that his arm's messed up, knowing that I'm going to say no. And then he's just like, yeah, I've done my part now. I've asked. <laughs> I ask like the most the the mo the epitome of lip service that's what it is that's what I <laughs> I love you Ray <laughs> but yeah thank you guys for joining us uh, Roy if you do ever get a chance to watch this um, you know huge thank you for uh, giving us the materials to be able to go through and learn so much about the company I mean the company's got such a rich history Zeno has done so much for the industry as well so yeah, thank you to everyone that helped out with this live stream. I hope this was uh, entertaining, useful or whatever it is. And I uh, hope to see you all in the next one. So thank you guys. Comment, suggestions, like, subscribe, you know, typical stuff. See you guys in the next one. Now, uh, here's the thing. How does Alex normally switch this off? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if I don't screw this up. What does he do? He fades out or something. I don't, I don't know what, I'm... listen guys, if this, if this abruptly ends, I apologize. <laughs>